agenda. We have no appointments. We have no hearings. Reported a select board. Is there any board members that have anything to report? Just that uh, from a community point of view, I went to the Harley Davidson event, Chili event on Saturday. It was, it was very nice, very nice deal. It was great chili and people came out to support Dr. Bigda. So I think it was a nice event. And there will be the public uh, forum on Chapter 61. Uh, that will be at Norris School. It will be next week on Thursday at 6 o'clock. Right. Speaking of which, the, I sat in on the Agricultural Committee meeting last night. They voted to send a letter to Senator Hummison asking the Senator to look at reviewing Chapter 61 with the hope of modifying the language of that law in the future as they feel it's not serving the farmers. Uh, that will come out of the Agricultural Committee directly. Yeah, um, one thing I was going to mention last meeting, I forgot that um, I wanted to congratulate the Hampshire Regional Girls Varsity Basketball Team. <laughs> they made it all the way to the state finals. They're number two in the state, and it was awesome. They did a great job, and I wanted to congratulate them for that. Very good. And now, the town administrator's report. None, thank you. Excellent job, Ed. Appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> All right, the business at, ha business at hand. This meeting is basically formulated to work on our 2019 budget, operating, and capital, and override discussion, and with a joint meeting of the Finance Committee. Uh, Ed, I'd like you to start this off as being the Chief Financial Officer. And I'm going to silence my phone. That'll be a good idea. It's a good idea. I think I'll do the same. All right. And I think what I'd like to do is walk through a summary of the different budget scenarios and then go to line item budget and for both the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee. So basically, and this has been adjusted a few times today, but uh, basically when the fiscal year 2019 request came in, uh, the request totaled $17,248,980.89. Uh, our anticipated revenues for fiscal year 2019 are $16,465,535. Hey, Ed, Ed, before you get going, since there's a lot of the paperwork out there, can you tell us what sheet you're starting with just so everybody's on the same page? This one right here. Can you also get the mic angled up towards you more? Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. It says budget scenarios. Southampton fiscal year 2019 budget scenarios in the upper left hand corner. So when the request came in, that actually showed that we had a potential deficit for fiscal year 2019 of $783,445.89. $783, Vicki and I took a look at that and uh, there were specific instructions that had gone out with uh, the, the budget letters uh, as far as returning them. Um, we took a look at it and said, okay, what would a level service budget be if it fell under the parameters of the instructions which were sent out? 
which at the time were basically contract only contractual increases, uh, and at the time um, the thought was a 2% COLA. When Vicki made the adjustments to the level service budget, uh, that actually reduced the potential deficit to $591,798.97. I took a look at it and said, uh, fiscal year 2019 is not going to be a good year at all. We are going to need an override. Uh, if we are going to sell this to the voting public uh, and the taxpayers, um, we really need to act like this is not a normal year and it's not business as normal. So uh, starting from that level service budget, I have made some recommendations uh, here to the Board of Selectmen um, to whittle that number down to a smaller amount to ask for an override. And those assumptions basically are that there be no new positions on the municipal side uh, from what was approved in the fiscal year 2018 to budgets. There are no additional hours added to any positions on the municipal side from the fiscal year 2018 approved budgets. There'd be no hourly pay increases other than collective bargaining agreement step increases um, on the municipal side from the fiscal year 2018 approved budgets. So that basically includes that no 2% COLA for non-union employees. We have three bargaining units that uh, their collective bargaining agreement end on June 30th, 2018. We have not entered into negotiations as of yet. So um, for those that we would include no 2% COLAs for the union employees for the year, first year of that contract. Um, this also included a reduction in highway wages um, for uh, the highway superintendent's request for half a laborer position um, due to the fact that um, one of the laborers was serving as uh, custodian for the town hall, the library, and the police department. Um, those funds were pulled out and a separate individual was hired to do those duties. Um, also, the highway superintendent had requested that there be an additional 10 hours per man overtime uh, requested for fiscal year 2019 for um, things like trees falling in the road or any other emergencies that came up. Uh, the highway superintendent did say that uh, at the start of the fiscal year 18 budget that uh, he saw a uh, very quick and immediate deficit in the wage account due to those emergencies. So, Ed, uh, uh, do you mind questions or you want to wait? I am here for you. So I just, where it says reduce 10 hours per man overtime request. How many hours were actually requested for overtime versus how many you reduced? Did you reduce all of them that were requested or just 10 hours, which is less than what was requested? 10 hours were requested. It was zero hours for fiscal okay, so year 2018, and all 10 hours have been reduced. So it's, it's a net. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And if I say anything wrong, Randall, you're free to correct me. That is correct. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, the assessing assessors department and the board of assessors uh, need to upgrade their um, vision software. What they currently have is going out of date, will not be supported anymore. Um, in addition to ha having to do the upgrade, the town hall server is not compatible with the vision uh, software. So uh, they had looked at a uh, cloud-based storage and backup alternative, which would be, uh, which have a cost of $6,000 a year. I took a look at that. Our server has really one more year of useful life left in it at the most. We'll have to replace it next year. Um, server for what we use should be somewhere around $7,500. Uh, I took a look at this and said, okay, why don't we allocate the $7,500, upgrade our server a year early uh, so that 
the assessing software can also be housed on it uh, and that would be a $7,500 one-time fee um, other than any, any um, IT services that go along with keeping that up uh, but that should last us five years so um, it would seem like a more efficient way uh, and prudent way of the use of funds mm -hmm. to get to the end result and that savings can only be done if we do allocate the $7,500 uh, for the server. Uh, the legal expenses, we had originally requested $40,000, which was our four-year average for legal expenses. Uh, that was up from actually $2,500, which was appropriate at, appropriated at the annual town meeting. Um, we did add $10,000 to that at the special town meeting, but we de decreased our uh, legal expense expenses to $30,000 and the override budget. Uh, the highway winter roads wages and expenses uh, request has been reduced to $100 more than in each of those two accounts than what was allocated for fiscal year 2018. Um, the highway superintendent was hoping to get more overtime hours allocated into the winter roads uh, wages piece. Uh, however, that is probably, that is the only account we really can deficit spend. Um, at this point in time, the conservation agent is still included in the override budget number. However, I will say that yesterday at the finance team meeting, not the finance committee meeting, but the finance team meeting, uh, the majority of the members of the finance team, which are made up of uh, the principal assessor, the accountant, and the treasurer collector, myself, and the chairman of the finance committee, uh, the majority actually voted uh, at that time that it would be our recommendation to remove the conservation agent from the over override uh, budget request. Uh, we decreased the town reports to be level funded for $500, uh, which it had been cut at, to at the annual town meeting. Uh, reduce the, in the requested increase to the police department expense account. They had requested $6,000 uh, for police department expenses, um, an increase over fiscal year 2018. Uh, I did reduce that to a recommendation of only $3,000. Um, and today, the, actually, the school confirmed that um, there'd be a re reduction to the local school transportation of um, roughly $29,000 in that account. So um, that would bring us to a override budget request of 517000 $359 and 12 cents. Hey, Ed, I'm going to ask another question because uh, we're talking about level service budget and I'm not picking on a department, but the police expense request, they asked for eight or 6,000 more than last year and we're, we're giving them 3,000 less. So we're <coughs> in increasing that line item by three. I just Correct. want to make sure we're fair across all, all departments that we don't increase anything at this point to come down to the lowest number possible. Are, is there other items like that throughout the budget that they're, we're giving them less than they requested, but they're getting more than fiscal 18? There might be a few. Okay, so I, I think we should uh, try to take those out and have a, a, a level item. I don't think we're taking questions right this second, but one you want to? So as, as we go along, Ed, maybe we can point those out so we know. Because I don't want people to come back and say, well, they got this and we didn't get that. So I think we need to be right clear from the beginning. Sure. And if, uh, as we go along, the board wants to vote on those so that we know, I know what. Well, what's the thought of the other members on, on things like that? Well, if we identify them, we can talk about them later. 
Okay. Really? That was good to me. Okay. All right. Depending on any adjustments, that brings us to the amount we'd be looking for an override. The next set of scenarios, and I actually had originally done it in two parts, and uh, I know I'm reaching, but I had, as we move into the non-override, uh, if the override does not pass budget, uh, two pieces. It, Actually, statutorily, uh, unless two or more member towns of Hampshire Regional vote against funding the um, school budget as passed by the school committee, uh, we would be statutory require, required to fund that. Uh, I started off in the first half of my request would, uh, were based on the premises, what if two or more communities that are members of Hampshire Regional did not pass that budget. Um, so uh, I made the assumption uh, that half of their assessment to the town of Southampton uh, was not approved and they'd have to go back and develop a new budget. Now half of that is roughly $150,000 to the Southampton. However, that's just Southampton. We make up about 55% of the Hampshire regional budget. So really to attain $150,000 assessment savings, um, they would have to cut their overall budget uh, a little greater than $300,000. Uh, the other assumption that sits in the uh, non-override budget uh, would be that we would fund the Norris Elementary School at minim minimum uh, school spending amount, required school spending amount, which is about $137,000 uh, over what they received in fiscal year 2018. That's about a $245,000 reduction from what their request was in a level service budget. From there, the assumptions were, and this one depending on if it stays in the override budget or not, uh, the first piece was that in the non-override budget, um, the con conservation agent, $10,000 would go. And this is a position that uh, was funded during fiscal year 2018 with a grant. And this, it's only a position that's been here for a little less than a year. Shared with East Hampton. Right. Uh, East Hampton, I believe, is 11 hours uh, a week, and we are either eight or nine hours a week with this shared agent. Uh, reduction to the increase in police overtime of $2,000. They had requested a $3,000 increase. Reduction in legal expenses down to $25,000 level, which would be level funded to fiscal year 2018. That's a $5,000 decrease reduction of police equipment expenses of uh, $1,500 uh, reduction in dispatch communication expenses of $1,500 reduction in general highway expenses of $10,000 this would come from the $150,000 or actually $155,000 line item uh, that is mostly used for to maintain our roads um, reduction in library utility expenses of $1,750, reduction of library maintenance expenses of $1,750, reduction of town administrators expenses of $750, reduction of the town hall building expenses um, of $1,987, which should cover our contractual uh, our contracts, uh, but would not leave us much. Uh, other than that, uh, for anything extraordinary that came up during fiscal year 2019. Reduction in accounting expenses of $265, reduction to treasurer expenses of $1,000, reduction of town clerk expenses of $500, reduction of selectman expenses by $750, reduction in EMD expenses of $750, Elimination of the 
ambulance third shift, which would actually be split between fire and EMS, um, $45,000. Municipal reduction of workforce of three employees. Um, this could be a police officer, a highway equipment operator, um, not replacing the town administrative assistant who will be leaving us shortly uh, and not filling that position. Uh, reduction of the collector treasurer wages um, since a new collector treasurer would be starting by five thousand uh, dollars that would uh, come to roughly one hundred and fourteen thousand uh, dollars we would have to increase unemployment due to layoffs and this is number really uh, is a number that we've estimated for both the impact on the municipal side uh, and uh, for the Norris school side um, of $90,000. We are direct pay, so uh, if we do lay off any um, employees, um, that flows right to our unemployment budget, so those numbers would have to be added back in. Um, then we get into the second half of what if uh, the Hampshire Regional Budget, two member communities did not vote against it. It would go through. We'd be required to fund it as requested of rough rounded to about $300,000. That means we'd have to accumulate another $150,000 in reductions. Uh, I threw out some crazy ideas in the interim of, okay, what if we did not fund uh, an annual audit? This is a bylaw requirement, however, so just to let you know that, uh, that would be a reduction of $22,500. Uh, we are due for an OPEB uh, study again. Um, we are required to do those any every so many years by the state, and that would be a reduction of $9,500. Those two ideas really aren't on the top of my list, but I listed them out there. Going forward, uh, a municipal reduction of an additional one employee of $40,000. Uh, we'd still have to increase our unemployment due to uh, layoffs and this could both impact if we were to lay someone off or reduce hours for certain employees, um, add another $21,000 into the unemployment account, eliminate the second shift from the ambulance, um, that would be 50, a $55,000 reduction. Um, we would uh, garner some health insurance savings from a reduction in workforce and layoffs. Uh, we've estimated that if all of those came true, that we'd have about a $41,000 savings on uh, the health insurance side of things for active employees. Um, close the library for one day a week. If we did that, I'd pr probably um, suggest a Monday, which is a five-hour day, potential savings from that is $22,256. And we could shut off some street lights for $2,500. Um, there are not a lot of street lights through Southampton, um, but it is a potential savings. So with, and this, all of those listed, we would still have about a $30,000 deficit that I'd still have to identify areas, whether that's additional employment positions or uh, expense accounts to cut to get us to uh, back to a balanced budget. And, you know, these potential cuts really uh, we're looking at a delay in police, fire, and ambulance response time, a reduction in response time or filling pot potholes, plowing streets, uh, mowing, maintaining parks and cemeteries. Um, really did not get into a reduction of the town hall uh, as an option. Uh, we did look at um, one of the potential reductions in the uh, second half of 
these from initial positions rather than laying someone off of reducing all town uh, or all administrative assistant positions uh, by five hours per week. And that would be um, in the highway department and the, the two people in the collector treasurer's office, um, the individual in the uh, accounting office and the individual in the town clerk's office and our had already made um, the potential reduction of in the workforce suggestion of not filling the town administrative uh, assistance position so that's where we are with those and then when you're through with questions on this my recommendation is we can go line by line through uh, the detailed budget Quick question. On um, the second and third shift, you're eliminating those. Did you leave money there for on call or did you eliminate everything? That this time is elimination of everything. So there's not even an on call, there's nothing. There's nothing, right. Okay. Are you talking fire or EMT? EMT, I'm talking about. Okay, because it, it looks like uh, what was requested or last year approved was 218. And what was requested this year is 227, and you're eliminating a hundred thousand. So it leaves a chunk of money, not enough to run the department, but it leaves money in there for EMT wages on call, I would think. That we'd have to discuss with the chief who's here of what those impacts really are. Yeah, I mean, there's money in there again. I'm not yeah, thinking that yeah. it's enough, but it's just numbers. I'm you taking public? I wasn't going to take public until we got. So what I want to do is flag any questions. What I want to do is keep this right now between the select board and the finance committee. And then once that's satisfied, yep. then I want to branch it out to the general yep. department heads and then the public. I mean, there's a few line items in here that I think we need to go back and, and look at, take the three or 4,000 off here. And the big one is obviously the Nor or the Hampshire Regional, even if they go back to relook at the budget, they may come back with something very similar. So we gotta be prepared for that, I think. So we gotta keep our numbers as close to accurate as we can. And I guess another comment in general is, are we decreasing some of the line items, and I'll use legal expense for the sake of the discussion if it's been averaging forty thousand dollars over the last three years and we cut it to 30 are we just putting a number in there to bring a budget number low because after all this budget all these budgets are approved and i'm a, a broken record here is we've got to keep the departments on the budgets that we approve and that's the hard part legal fees can get away from us because we don't have control overtime wages for the police can get away from us because we don't have so we got to develop a plan, but then we got to develop a plan to stick to the plan. And I think that's the tough one. And with legal fees, you know, one of the things is we would definitely have to manage that differently than we right. currently are. Uh, you know, my recommendation would that anyone would that is seeking legal advice would have to come through the town administrator, and that very possibly that some of those we'll just have to do the research on our own rather than sending them on to. Yeah. So I, I guess to my yeah. underlying question is are we being reasonable on some of these line items as much as we can be so I think that's key mm -hmm. so John uh, Mike Rosenberg uh, 144 East Street Finance Committee the specific for the legal expense line so we based it off of budgeted last year with an increase due to possible pending issues that may arise next year we did not include what was added at the special town meeting because it was described as a above and beyond circumstance, so we didn't carry that, but we did add a little bit in there because of pending situations. I guess I was using that as an example. You right. can never tell when another case comes up, and you yep. know. But thank you. And by the way, congratulations. I haven't seen you since you had your baby. So your point is there was thought in that number. It wasn't yeah. just pulled out. It was based off of our budget. You're on, the Dan, you're on the finance committee. If you're on the finance committee, go ahead. Boy, first enough for everyone. Well, yeah. no, you got to identify yeah. yourself. Yeah. You know, I, I warn people about putting a speak uh, microphone up on the ceiling, but then I'm afraid we're going to pick up every conversation yeah, going on in this room. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
We had talked about that too. <laughs> I did. All right, so do you want to move over and go through the line item budget? I think that's probably the best way to approach this. All right. Moderator expenses would be level funded at zero dollars across the board. Selectman expenses were funded at seventeen hundred dollars. Uh, the request for nineteen were seventeen hundred dollars. Level service would be seventeen hundred dollars. The override budget would be seventeen hundred dollars, and the non-override budget would be seven fifty. Selectman expenses minutes is level funded at $1,500 across the board. Internet service is level funded at $1,200 right across the different budget scenarios. Web page maintenance is level funded at $600 across all the scenarios. Employment advertising is $500 level funded across all the scenarios. Town administrator salary is was $80,000, the request was for a 2%. Uh, that is eliminated uh, at the level of the override budget and carries forward, it forward in the non-override budget. Administrative assistant wages uh, were uh, 13, uh, funded at $13,298. That is consistent across the board. Um, other than the COLA that was in the level service, which has now been removed through the override budget. Uh, when you get to the non-override budget, uh, that position at this point in time uh, is not being filled. Administration expenses of $1,500 were level funded through the override budget. When it gets to the non-override budget, uh, it's reduced to $750. Photocopier lease and supplies last year was funded at $4,000. There was a contractual increase to $4,500. It is funded at $4,500 uh, across all the budget scenarios. Postage uh, is level funded to $15,661 throughout the budget scenarios. The finance committee expenses uh, are level funded at $200 across the budget scenarios. Reserve fund uh, was funded at $5,000 for fiscal year 18. Actually, in the level service budget, we had taken it down to zero, but um, looking at the very tight budget scenarios of both an override and uh, a non-override budget, uh, we put the $5,000 back in uh, for unforeseen circumstances um, in those two last budget scenarios. Otherwise, if something unanticipated happened, well, you'd either have to wait for a special town meeting or May or June to actually transfer funds. Uh, town accountant salary, once you get through, it was funded at 52000 The level service originally had a 2% uh, COLA in it. Um, it is now back to the 52000 both in the override and the non-override budget. Assistant accounting wages uh, were funded at $19,732, other than the COLA originally and the request in the level service. Um, at the override budget level, it would be level funded to the fiscal year 18 level with no COLA. Uh, and then in the non-override uh, budget, this would actually have a five hour a week reduction in uh, hours. And that is just uh, that is there and as a uh, possibility. Uh, the independent audit is level funded across all budget scenarios at 22.5. Uh, let's say the town accountant expenses of 800 that were funded at $865 are level funded through the override budget and then reduced to $600 in the non-override budget. Accounting software support. 
um, was funded at $3,300. There was a contractual increase, which would take us to $3,600. It would be funded at that level throughout the rest of the budget scenarios. Principal assessor uh, wages were $40,034. Uh, that's level funded uh, through all the budget scenarios. The assessor administrative assistant was actually uh, funded at $26,061. Uh, we are actually looking at not filling that position with an individual, but uh, maybe uh, using per diem uh, employees, so reducing that throughout the budget scenarios to $10,000. Assessor's expenses were $4,187 funded in 2018. Uh, the request was for $4,200. Uh, that is the level that the budget is funded at all the way through the budget scenarios. Assessor's software support uh, was $6,000. Uh, the request was for $6,485. This is a contractual increase uh, for software support. Um, that uh, is funded at the, that level throughout the rest of the budget <coughs> scenarios. Assessor's town maps was funded at $2,000 for fiscal year 2018. Uh, it had been reduced from the year before. Um, off expense information, but some of the town maps did not come in until after, or, um, after the uh, fiscal year 18 budget was um, sent out and approved. They have requested uh, it to go back to $4,000 as that's where really what it takes to um, produce those map changes every year. Um, it's funded at the $4,000 level throughout the budget scenarios. Assessor's Consultants uh, was funded at $1,500 for fiscal year 2018. Um, the request was for $2,000 um, and it's funded that way throughout the budget scenarios, and this is a way to um, supplement the reduction in uh, that administrative personnel. Assessor's cloud hosting backup. Uh, this was the $6,000 request I had talked about earlier. It uh, was uh, listed in the level service budget, but has been removed in uh, the override and the non-override budget. Again, that's something that we can only do is if we do replace the town hall server. Triennial evaluation is no longer uh, done with the change from the Municipal Modernization Code. Assessor's cyclical inspections, however, uh, take over. This is a requirement from the state. Uh, would that change? The request whatever you want to go okay. through. And once he gets done with all this, then we'll visit the ones okay. that... Gotcha. Thank you. Well, sorry. It's, it's okay. Uh, the request was for $2,247. That remains throughout uh, the request throughout the budget scenarios. And like I say, that is a new requirement from the state. Treasurer's collector salary uh, was funded at $54,581. Um, for fiscal year 18, uh, that would be the amount in the uh, override budget. Uh, and when we move to the non-override budget, this is where we made the recommendation to take a look at that salary since someone new will be starting in the position and is it possible to reduce that by uh, perhaps $5,000. Now, Ed, on that, I mean, at least my understanding is we want to review it before somebody goes in so that we know that it's an appropriate salary. So are we going to be able to do that? I'm hoping that we will get that done before uh, beforehand, yes. Great, okay. Uh, let's see. Treasurer collector's wages. These are for the individuals that are in the treasurer collector's office. Uh, no, let's see, yes. Uh, was 52, funded at $52,416 in fiscal year 18. Um, without the 2% COLA, it would be uh, the same $52,416 in the override budget. Uh, and again, this is one of those areas that's possible that we're looking at if we re as one of the options of 
reduction to workforce if we reduce um, those two positions by five hours per week. That would be $43,829.10. Treasurer's collector's expenses was funded at $9,475 in fiscal year 18. Um, that stays consistent through the override budget and then once we move to the non-override budget, um, it reduces by $1,000 to $8,475. Treasurer software support, this is another area that um, was a contractual increase. Uh, fiscal year 2018 was $10,268. Um, the contractual increase would be to $10,700, and that's where it would remain throughout the budget scenarios. Legal expenses uh, were funded at $25,000 at the annual town meeting. $10,000 was added at the special town meeting. We had requested a 40,000, increase to $40,000, which was the four-year average. Um, that was in the level service budget. When we moved to the um, override budget, that was reduced to $30,000. And in the non-override budget, and it's reduced to $25,000. Tax title expenses were funded at $3,000, and that's uh, how the uh, remains through the different budget scenarios. Town clerk salary, $39,090. Um, the request was for the 2% COLA, which was in the level service budget. Um, when we move to the override budget, it's level funded back at the 39090 and remains that way in the override budget. Town clerk assistant wages, uh, $15,015 was the funding level for um, fiscal year 18. There were additional hours that uh, had been asked for for that position, um, which the request was for $18,720. Um, the level service would have been last year's uh, funding plus the 2% when we moved to the override budget, it's level funded at the 15015, and in the, the non-override uh, budget, it would be reduced by five hours a week, which would be $10,844.22. Uh, town clerk's expenses were $1,000 uh, as approved for fiscal year 18. The request was to increase that to $1,500, uh, that was the amount in the level service and the override budget, once we move to the non-override budget, that's reduced to $1,000. Election registration wages, uh, and this is really predicated on how many elections there are during the year. Um, you know, last year there were less elections. Um, what was approved was $1,280. Uh, the number of elections for fiscal year 19 uh, would be $1,610, and that stays constant throughout <coughs> the different budget scenarios. Election registration expenses were funded at, and this follows the same pattern, they were funded at $10,050 for fiscal year 18. The request for the amount of elections for fiscal year 19 is $16,525. That stays constant throughout the different budget scenarios. Uh, conservation Commission expenses were funded at zero for fiscal year 2018. They were in request to increase to $5,460. Um, that did not appear in level service override or uh, non-override budget. Conservation Commission agent, uh, there was no appropriation for fiscal year 2018. This is the position that uh, was um, funded through the shared grant with East Hampton. Um, they had requested $6,519 um, with the thought process being that a town appropriation would pay for um, a portion of the salary and that uh, the fees from wetlands uh, filings could be used for uh, the rest of it. Um, you can only use those wetland findings for um, work that is associated with the wetlands, number one, and number two, if um, those funds were to be used up for any particular reason, <coughs> then they would not be available. So um, actually in the level service budget, 
it wasn't listed out, but um, currently in the override budget, there's $10,000 in there, which would be a town appropriation if we wanted to keep that position. And then in the override, the non-override budget, um, <coughs> that would be funded at zero and the position would go away. Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, uh, it was $912 for fiscal year 2018. Um, the formula with contractual increase would take it to $920 and that is consistent throughout the budget, different budget scenarios. Barnes Aquifer commu uh, Committee, it was funded at $2,000 for fiscal year 18 and it stays that way throughout the different budget scenarios. Ed, can I just ask what that committee does? Uh, I don't remember talking about it recently. And that's uh, East Hampton, Holyoke, Southampton, and Westfield. Yeah. And they um, oversee all the building projects in right. the community to see what's been submitted. But what, what do they need the funding for, I guess, is my question. Part of the funding is to support this project through Pioneer Valley Planning. Yeah, Pioneer Valley Planning being the ground there. So we can't eliminate that. Okay, we could. I'm just saying it, it doesn't What, what would we lose? Again, I'm not saying we should. We I just want to question it. We lose the oversight committees of four different communities that monitor the sole source aquifer that provides drinking water for a number of communities in this region. And this is our share of it? This is our share mm -hmm. of it. Okay. And this all started with the TCE contamination years ago here. Okay. Thanks. And I'll take for it, I think. Yep. You know the one. I do, yeah. Let's see. It's a cleaning solvent. <laughs> right. Hampshire. Hampshire Council of Governments membership was $2,500 for fiscal year 18. Uh, that number remains constant throughout the different budget scenarios. Town Hall custodial wages uh, was $13,247 uh, approved in fiscal year 2018. Um, the request was a reduction to 10,391.19, which would include a COLA. Um, level service was 91.8720. Um, override budget would stay constant 91.8720, as would the non-override budget. And I will just note that that reduction um, in the cost is due to the fact that um, for fiscal year 18, the cost uh, of the custodian was split between um, an account here at the town hall and the library, but the individual also cleaned the police department, but the police department um, didn't have anything in their budget and didn't pay directly. So this is really just a reduction here to um, say that let's um, associate the cost with the building that's actually being cleaned. So there is an associated increase over in the police department budget. Uh, telephone stays constant at the fiscal year 18 level of $8,000. Gas and electric for town hall stays constant at the fiscal year 18 level of $27,000. Building expenses uh, were funded actually at $20,000 uh, at the annual town meeting. There was an additional $12,000 appropriated at the special town meeting. Uh, the request was for, uh, for fiscal year 2019 was basically $22,000. Uh, that stayed constant through the override budget, but in the non-override budget, it was reduced to $20,000. Town reports, uh, they were funded in fiscal year 18 at $500. The request was for $1,000 because the 500 doesn't really cover the amount of uh, the printing for the town reports, even to cover the uh, annual town meeting. Um, at the level service budget, it was still $1,000. It's been bet reduced back to the $500 level in both the override and the non-override budgets. 
Technology equipment was funded at $6,500. Uh, that stays constant through the override budget and is reduced to $5,500 in the non-override budget. Technology services was funded at $6,500. The request was for $9,500. Uh, I was hoping to be able to add a contract for our IT services for the upcoming year. Um, actually, um, that disappeared with the level service budget and we stay at 6500 through the rest of the budget scenarios. Emergency management expenses were funded at $1,750. That stays constant through the override budget, but is reduced to $1,000 in the non-override budget. Um, the reverse 911 system or code red, which was paid to a grant previously, so there was no town appropriation. Uh, we have gotten some pushback from the state on funding the code red through the grant. So uh, the fiscal year 19 request was for $3,900, uh, which is the cost, uh, yearly cost of the system, and that stays constant through the budget scenarios. Public safety, uh, police chief's salary was funded at 96.9. Um, the fiscal year 19 request and level service would have had the 2% coal in it. As you move to the override and the non-override budget, the 2% COLA has been removed. Police department wages were $630,000 uh, for fiscal year 18 as approved. The request for 19 was 651 787 which would have included the COLA uh, as we move to the override budget that was reduced back to the fiscal year 18 level of $630,000. Uh, when we move to the non-operating, uh, non-override budget, uh, it's reduced to $580,000. This would actually reflect one less full-time police officer. Uh, police incentive Quinbill was uh, approved at $41,880. The calculations uh, would have been for, uh, would have gone up due to the COLA to 441712 um, in the uh, override budget and the non-override budget that is uh, reversed back to a level funding to fiscal year 18 of $41,880. Police department overtime uh, was funded at $57,000 for 18. Uh, the request was to increase that to $60,000, which stays through the override budget. And then in the non-override budget, it is reduced to $57,000. Uh, police department expenses um, were funded at $62,000. The request was to increase that to $68,000. That was reduced by $3,000 back in the override budget to back to $65,000 um, and stays at $65,000 through the non-override budget. Police equipment maintenance was funded at $24,000. Uh, the request was for $27,000. Uh, level service was $27,000. Uh, that stays through the override budget. Um, and was reduced to 25,500 in the non-override budget. And this is the account that uh, the radar equipment is calibrated out of and uh, the uh, software um, support is paid for for the police department. Regional lockup assessment um, is level funded across the board at $5,502. Police department <laughs> building expenses um, are level funded across the board at $25,000. Building custodial wages were not funded uh, during fiscal year 18. They were in the town hall budget. Um, so uh, the request would have been to move it over here with a 2%, um, including 2% COLA would have been $4,517.91. Um, in the level service, the override and the non-override budget. Uh, that's without the call at 4176. Communication wages for fiscal year 2018 were approved at $207,000. Uh, 
the request was to increase to $215,272. Um, at the override budget level, that was um, level funded back to the fiscal year 18 level of 207000 and continues in the non-override budget. Communications expenses uh, were are level funded to fiscal year 18 of $4,900 through the override and then they're reduced to $3,400 at the non-override budget level. Fire chief salary, uh, $78,654. Uh, at the annual town meeting, there was an additional $6,346 added to that for the EMS director's position at the fall town meeting. Um, request was for 86.7. Um, when you move to the override budget, the COLA would be taken out of that for $85,000 and it would stay constant through the non override budget. Administrative aid had been requested, but uh, was not included even in the level service budget as that would be a new position. Fire department wages, uh, and this gets into that funding the second and third shift, um, were originally funded at uh, $76,199. Uh, the request was for $227,373.50. That would stay constant through the override request and then be reduced um, in the, the non override budget to 177,373. And this is balanced off with the uh, EMS wages account, which we'll come to in a few, few minutes. Fire department expenses uh, were level funded um, at 22,1 through um, the override budget, and then the non override budget reduced to $21,000. Fire truck maintenance was, was a, had a zero funding to it last year. The request was for $5,000, but um, that did not um, make it through anywhere through the level service or through the non override budget. Fire department building expenses were funded at $12,900 at the annual town meeting, $5,833.31 was added at the special town meeting. Um, request for 19 was 18,733.31. That stays constant through the override budget all the way to the non override budget. Fire expense turnout gear was funded at $3,000 uh, for fiscal year 18. The request for 19 was $12,000 as some of the equipment or uh, the turnout gear used to be funded uh, through a through the capital. Um, really not capital goods, but um, so um, the level service, uh, the override and the non-override budget would be level funded to the fiscal year 18 level of $3,000. EMT standby was funded at $74,460. The request for this year was $18,250. That stays constant through uh, the non-override budget. EMT wages were funded at $217,798. Uh, at the annual town meeting, another 56375 were added at the fall, fall or winter special town meeting. Um, so the request for 19 was $227,373.50. Um, that stays constant through the override budget and then is reduced to $177,000. $373.50 in the non override budget. <coughs> Ambulance billing is level funded throughout at $7,000. EMT licensing and certification is level funded at $2,500 across the board. Ambulance EMS expenses are level funded at $40,000 across the board. Ambulance maintenance uh, was not funded during fiscal year 18. The request was for $2,250. Um, that did not stay uh, either in the level service, the override, or the non-override budget. Building inspector salary was funded at $53,060 at the annual town meeting. $6,800 was added to that at the um, winter special town meeting. Request for 
fiscal year 19 was $61,105.48. Uh, that would um, be reduced without the COLA and the override budget to $59,860 and would stay constant in the non-override budget. Building inspection expenses uh, are level funded across the board at $6,212. Building inspector al alternate is level funded at $800 across the board in different budget scenarios. Gas and plumbing expenses uh, were funded at $1,336 um, due to the trainings that are involved that was requested to be increased to $1,676. Uh, and that stays constant throughout the budget scenarios. E-permitting software, um, was, which the uh, building department used, is, was funded at $4,000 for fiscal year 2018, and that stays through the budget scenarios for fiscal year 19. Can I just ask, since we're just between uh, items, um, the budget you have for the override not passing, does not include if the Hampshire Regional Schools budget passes. Is that correct? So if the Hampshire Regional School budget passes, we have to cut these more. Correct? I believe it's actually in, in there for the worst scenario that it passes. Correct. correct. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. what we're talking about right now will cover, we'll have a balanced budget if Hampshire Regional passes. When we get through it, we're still going when I get, we're, yeah, we're still okay. $30,000 short. Okay. From All right. Yeah. Thank you. But. Ed, do you want a drink of water or anything? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to lose you, too. I mean, the way things are going around here. <laughs> do, do we have any Jack around? Vicki? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Let's get okay. through this, and okay. then maybe we'll take a little bit. You can't tell the <laughs> All right, into education. The elementary school was fun North Elementary was funded at four thousand sixty nine four million sixty nine thousand. I wish. Yeah, four hundred and two dollars for fiscal year eighteen. Uh, the request, which would have included the math interventionist, was four million five hundred eleven thousand three hundred four dollars. Their level service budget without that would be $4,456,304. That stays constant through the override. However, when you go to the non-override budget, uh, we've allocated what we've calculated for net minimum school spending, which that's a $137,000 increase over fiscal year 2018. So that's $4,206,402. Charlie, I, I heard that, but with all due respect, this is a joint meeting, and I feel that members of the Finance Committee should be allowed to speak. It's They're very pertinent. To speak. I just want to try to get through all these lines, and then come back to the ones But you're allowed to comment on individual lines, but our committee in this joint session are, are not? I, I don't understand. Well, our committee shouldn't be talking either, to be quite frank. Okay, my point is on the non override budget for the Norris School, it's actually being funded at $150,000 less than 2012, just FYI. Let's see, local school transportation was funded at $238,385. Uh, in fiscal year 18, that was the original request. We did receive word from uh, the school today that actually there'll be a decrease um, to that account to $209,116. That will stay constant through uh, the rest of the budget scenarios. Vocational tuition was funded at 98000 yeah. Hmm. 898? Yeah, $898,080. Uh, and the fiscal year 19 request was $860,000, and that will stay constant through the budget scenarios. It's an estimate. It's an estimate, yeah. We won't know until actually April 1st of what the estimated uh, 
students to attend vocational schools will be. Okay. Vocational transportation was funded during fiscal year 18 at $62,994. Uh, we do, since the year started, we actually had to pick up an, uh, an additional van to take uh, a student to Westfield Vocational. So that request for fiscal year 19, which continues through all the budget scenarios, is $82,000. Hampshire Regional Operating was approved at $4,797,313 in fiscal year 18. Their request for 19 is $5,090,926. Uh, that stays constant through out uh, the budget scenarios unless two or more member communities vote against that budget. Uh, let's see, Hampshire Regional Capital was funded at $298 thousand three hundred and seventy two dollars um, our capital requirement for fiscal year 19 actually has dropped to two hundred and eighty five thousand fifty seven dollars public works highway superintendent salary was funded at seventy four thousand eight hundred and thirty dollars um, the request and the level service would have had a two percent cola in it as we move to the override budget uh, and through the non-override budget, it would be level funded to fiscal year 18 levels. Administrative Assistant Highway um, was funded at $17,858. Uh, the request for fiscal year 19 uh, included the COLA plus additional hours for the Administrative Assistant. The request was for $22,685. Um, level service with a COLA would have been 18215 as you move to the override budget, um, that would not include a COLA, which was $17,858. And then as you move to the fiscal year 19 non-override budget, that would be reduced by five hours a week to $13,687.22. General highway wages uh, for fiscal year 18 were approved at $214,571. The request for fiscal year 19 was $238,164. Uh, we had talked about a little earlier what that included. Um, the override budget would be reduced back down to level funded till fiscal year 18 of $214,571. And the non-override budget would be a further reduction and loss of workforce to $169,571. General highway expenses um, for fiscal year 18 were approved at $152,301. Um, the request was for $155,347. Uh, that actually stayed through the override budget and at the non-override budget level was reduced by $10,000 to $145,347. Road machinery expenses uh, we're level funded across the board at $70,610. Highway building expenses uh, for fiscal year 18 were $23,000. Um, the re request was for a small increase to $23,460. That stays constant uh, across the board and the, the rest of the budget scenarios. Winter roads wages were funded at $138,210. Uh, the request for 19 was for $148,964. The level service uh, through the uh, level service would have been $138,220. And that should actually stay constant throughout the override budget. I think there's a glitch in there for uh, the override budget, which went up. $110. Uh, winter roads expenses uh, were funded at $122,000. The 19 request was for $124,440. Uh, that was what was in the level service budget. Um, that was reduced to $122,100 in the override and the non-override budget, which would have been $100 more than was funded in fiscal year 18. 
Street lighting, uh, $26,000 right now is level funded across the board. Cemetery commission expenses is level funded across the board at $1,500. Tree warden expenses is level funded across the board at $8,000. Health department wages, and this one gets a little confusing, uh, was funded into was that actually two positions were funded out of one line item for fiscal year 18 at 44,536. Um, they were looking to split that out separately um, for fiscal year 19. Uh, the request was actually for additional hours and additional pay, which would have come to about um, $64,000. Uh, that was reduced in the level service budget uh, back to um, level funding plus a COLA and the override and non-override budget, it's level should be, um, should be level funded for the health director um, to the fiscal year 18 level. And then for the health agent, uh, the same thing. Um, it should be level funded to the fiscal year 18 level in the override and non-override budget. Uh, board of Health expenses were level funded at $3,000 across the board. Uh, Sharps program is level funded at $3,000 across the board. Uh, mosquito control, which we originally thought we might bring forward for fiscal year 19, uh, is basically off the table and not funded uh, as it was not in fiscal year 18. Animal inspector salary stays level funded at $3,000 across the board. Council on aging wages uh, were, and part of this was paid through a grant. Uh, None of that's paid through a grant. Yeah, this is the town appropriation of 23-6. There are, this is supplemented by a grant the request by the Council of Aging uh, was to uh, remo remove the grant and fund it through um, town appropriation for 32-6. Um, that was removed to level funding for, or yeah, level funding for the level service budget and can stays constant through the override and non-override budget. Council on Aging Administrative Wages, uh, this is position that's funded through the grant. Uh, they had requested to move that over to a town appropriation um, that was not done through the level service, the override, or the non-override budget. Council of Aging Expenses uh, was funded at $1,650. Their request for fiscal year 19 was $1,860. Um, the level service and the override budget were at $1,650 and the non-override budget that is reduced to $1,300. Veterans agent salary was funded at $8,490 for fiscal year 18. Uh, that's where it would remain for the override and non-override budget. Veterans agent expenses are level funded at $600 throughout the budget scenarios. Veterans benefits were budgeted at $20,000 for fiscal year uh, 18. Uh, we have taken on some uh, new uh, additional veterans expenses. So uh, the request would be for $25,000 and that looks like actually where we'll probably finish up fiscal year 18 expending. Uh, so that amount remains constant um, in the override and non-override budget request. Culture and recreation, library wages um, were funded at $111,317. The request was for $113,748, which would have been uh, the COLA. When you move to the override budget, that's moved back to the level funding to 18 of $111,317. When you move to a non-override budget, if we uh, did close the library for one day a week, uh, being the Monday for five hours, that would be reduced to $93,317. 
library expenses um, were funded at $2,220 for fiscal year 18. Um, the request was for $3,870. That stays constant throughout uh, the budget scenarios. Library books, materials, and expenses uh, were funded at $28,510. The fiscal year 19 request was for $30,539. Uh, that stays constant across the board. Library utilities uh, were $11,000 for fiscal year 18. That stays constant through the override budget. Uh, when we move to the non-override budget, uh, that is reduced down to $7,250. <coughs> Library maintenance was funded at $7,683. Um, the fiscal year 19 Team request was 7183. Uh, that stays constant through the override budget and then is reduced to uh, 5433 for the non override budget. Park Commission expenses uh, were funded at $2,000, which stays constant through the override budget and then is reduced by, to $1,000 in the non override budget. Historical Commission. Uh, is level funded across the board at $1,000. Memorial Day is level funded across the board at $200. Contributory retirement for fiscal year 18 was um, approved at $674,546. Uh, the calculated increase for fiscal year 19 is $745,799, and that stays constant across the board. Workers' comp um, was approved at $45,269.83. Uh, we did have to transfer some monies into that account. Um, so uh, through the, from the request to the non-override budget, it is constant at $46,000. Unemployment compensation was funded at $8,000 in the fiscal year 18 budget. Uh, that stays constant until you move out to the non-override budget and due to the effects of looking at layoffs and workforce reduction, that would be increased to $119,000. Group health insurance was approved at $195,000 for fiscal year 18. And all oh, that's retirees, stays constant through the non-override budget. Group health insurance for active employees was funded at $881,000 for um, fiscal year 18. The request which would be the calculated equivalent contractual increase for 19 would have been $920,000. That stays constant through the override budget. Once we move into the non-override budget and have a reduction of workforce, that would be reduced to $875,000. Medicare was funded at 87.5. The calculation, calculation for uh, the increase for 19 would be $90,000, which stays constant throughout the budget scenarios. Group life insurance uh, is constant throughout the budget scenarios at $2,500 to what it was funded for in 18. Group life insurance retirees uh, was funded at $1,200. The calculated uh, increase, which will stay constant throughout the budget scenarios, is $1,300. Insurance general is level funded across the board at $82,000. We are, uh, while we did not fund an OPEB actuarial study in fiscal year 18, these do not have to be done every year, but we are due again for fiscal year 19. That would be $9,500. And debt. Uh, the uh, Larrabee renovation is constant at $110,000 to what was funded in 18. Uh, the pumper tanker uh, is constant at $26,450. The 
the Halloween October storm debt was $10,000. That has now been paid off, so we won't see uh, that for 19. The debt on the Norris School roof was $135,000. That is now uh, gone, so that was a debt exclusion that disappears from the chart, but also the revenues from that will disappear also. Um, the debt for the Pequot Pond sewer uh, stays constant at $20,000. The debt for the WPAT bonds um, was funded at $20,400 for 18, and it's showing a bit of an increase to $30,800 for 19. Um, the interest on those debts uh, for the Larrabee renovation um, was $61,669 for 18. That's going to be reduced to $56,168.76. The uh, pumper tanker, the debt proof for fiscal year 18 was $33.72. Um, that's going to reduce a little bit to $22,47.48. The Norris School roof interest on the debt was $2,025 for 18. That is disappearing as it's been paid off. Um, the Pequot Pond sewer, uh, the interest was at $2,408 for 18. That's going to be reduced to $1,490.37. And Halloween snowstorms debt was $517, and uh, that is going away. Interest on short-term debt is constant at $750. And that takes us through the line item accounts. I don't know about Ed, but I'm tired. Mm. I feel tongue-tied. Please. <laughs> okay, we will reconvene at seven o'clock. We don't have time to stretch. Are you buying a beer? <laughs>
Okay, Town of Southampton Board of Selectmen's uh, meeting for March 27th, reconvening at 7 o'clock. Uh, as you're, I'm going to remind you, this is being videotaped and broadcast. First of all, I, I want to remind everyone that we're talking about individuals here and their jobs. So be respectful and conscious of the fact of that when we discuss this. The way I want to operate this is to basically take sections of this budget, have these sections reviewed by the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen. Once these two groups have gotten through with that section, then I'm going to open it up for public comment. Then we'll move on to the second section. The first section we're going to start with is general government. Uh, Mike, I guess you as chair, might as well just get to the podium and uh, see if there's any comments that are coming out of the Finance Committee relative to general government. Um, sure. Michael Rosenberg, 144 East Street, Finance Committee. Um, a couple of the items, we, we did touch on the legal expense, you know, the increase there for sort of projected possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, one item which we also touched on was a conservation commission agent. Um, both the finance team and the finance committee were not in agreement in putting this in the budget. It was a, it was not funded in FY18. Um, the grant funding going away and how do we pay for that was a conversation prior to us taking on the role of participating in this grant. Putting it in there, I think also, it, it's an additional expense, it's an additional service, an additional role that we didn't pay for before. We don't feel, I say we as in the finance committee, I don't speak for the finance team, but we don't feel that it should be in there. Um, I understand it you know, hinders the Conservation Commission, but two years ago we did not have this, and last year we only had it for six months. The other item on here, which is I guess more of a question, gas and electric town hall. Um, so we have participated in, are, are participating in multiple power purchase agreements. Hotel power, remember? That's yes, the digester. When are we expecting to see some of those savings on those? I don't, I know some of the facilities are up and running. But are we expecting in FY19 to see some of those reductions in any of these line items? I know all of them are, but some are. So <coughs> if there is a projected reduction, it should be shown in here. We're expecting it, but we have no idea of really what that impact will be during fiscal year 19. We haven't started receiving our net metering credits yet, so we really don't have anything to forecast. So I would definitely push on HCOG or whatever other group that you've participated this in to get a you know a deliverable of when we will receive those how long what's the value you know what's to be expected I mean we everyone likes to get people signed up for those and then they I know from personal experience what I do those types of generation facilities sometimes they take longer than expected to construct so are we t thinking two years till generation is up and running and wrecks are coming in or are we thinking a year six months just to try to nail that down and I think HCOG, we do pay dues there, so they, they should be able to provide us with a, a date when we'll be receiving those. Our contract is for how long? Seven years? I can't remember, but there's a couple of contracts. Hopefully it didn't start the day you signed it. Right. Vicki Morrow, Town Accountant, Pomeroy Meadow Road. We have two contracts. One is for just supplier services, which will show up in an Eversource bill, which we used to use NG or GDF Suez or whatever that company changed the name to. The other piece is the net metering credits, which is a 20-year contract, which we signed like a year and a half ago. So, and it doesn't say anything in the contract when they're gonna start because they can't really, well, we signed the contract before they even approved it at Town Meeting in Deerfield to put the solar farm there anyway. So I don't think they even knew at that point when we signed it, when we were gonna, get those, but we should call HCOG to find out. Uh, Zach you, Holt, is that, I think that's that guy's name. Yeah, Zach Holt, yes. Zach Holt, you want right. to put that on your short list, Ed? It is. Yep. Thank you. Uh, as for the conservation agent, uh, I was one of the ones that pushed for that, mm -hmm. and I agree with you. We had this discussion over and over again. Based on what I'm seeing with the budget, I certainly respect and understand why we're taking it off the budget. Okay. But I'm speaking as me, I can't. I don't know what the board feels like. 
We're not, we're not taking it off the override budget. We're just taking it off the non-override budget. Are you so voting to a, are you voting to decide on that line item? It's just, in here today, but is it something that and I don't want to overstep here, but is it something the board wants to keep in there or is it something that was pro provided for That's the what we're discussing now. Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean. Okay. Do you want? Um, as far as the budget as a whole goes, my priorities are safety. And last night at the Conservation Commission meeting, there was a presentation about the groundwater or streams in town that are contaminated with E. coli. Um, the Conservation Commission budget was eliminated, um, not this year. So it doesn't show up as if they had any, any um, expenses or uh, nothing has shown up for their budget for Conservation Commission at all. And that's because the year before it was completely eliminated. So uh, I would support it and I would let the town's people decide whether or not they wanted to include it. So I would vote to include it in the override. Um, my hope and understanding is that they would uh, secure grants. Um, my understanding is she's already reached out to apply for a couple of grants and that that would um, possibly support her position. Am I hearing this is a motion? Nope, a discussion. Okay. Jim? Yeah, I was gonna ask the same question to Mike, but I had a notes on the, the savings for electrical. Um, but this section here, um, I agree, the 10,000 for the non-override. Um, I would take that out. Uh, it's a good discussion on whether we need to have it out. Yeah. Okay. It, it is out of the non-override. It is out of the non-override. Right. In the override, it's in. I just don't right. know. Yeah. So well, we can always come back to it. I mean, right now. Well, one clarification on the, just that budget in general and other smaller committee budgets. So a few years ago, um, I think it was select board directive with town administrator input to reduce or remove many of these small committee and commission budgets down to bare bones minimum, what do we need to provide? I think cherry picking which committees we fund and which committees we don't creates an issue if we're not allowing other committees to recoup the same funding that was removed a few years ago. So. Well, speaking of that, looks like conservation has no money, agricultural commission has no money, moderator has no money, selectman has no money, but finance committee does. So what is that we'll, about? We'll wipe it out, 200 bucks, gone. So the, uh, take it off. <laughs> those are for our dues to participate take it off. and to be registered as a license. Is. So the $200 is to be registered as a Massachusetts Finance Committee town, participating town. We receive mm -hmm. financial information, financial data based on our town, the rest of the towns. We receive financial management handbooks. We receive um, town meeting related information. We receive information related to how a finance committee operates on a yearly basis. Our $5,000 for the reserve fund is something that's um, something we're by law responsible for. Um, if you'd like to take the $5,000, you're welcome to, but that removes $5,000 from a possible emergency next year. Let, Are you talking let's, about the let's reserve? Focus, let's focus on the general uh, government's right. section okay. right now of the budget. Sure. <laughs> I can see this, it's like the Titanic, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I wanna hear more about the conservation agent position. I believe Dan wants to speak towards that. Um, a, a little bit on that, but I had some other questions. So, we're, I mean, the only thing that I have on, on the CONSCOM agent is, again, level funding shouldn't be in there. The risk you run of keeping it in the override budget is, is that still viewed as fluff because it's something we haven't had in this town forever. We've had it for six months out of 350 years, somewhere in that neighborhood. So, um, but my questions were geared a little bit more at around, I'm, I'm still, it's just not adding up this, this assessor software for me, why we now have to go to ho cloud hosting. So we, we've had this assessor software for a while. It's sitting somewhere on some server. Why do we have this $6,000 hosting charge this year that we never had in previous years? Oh, it's, what's you at? Well, you, you, you don't know? Or? Well, no, I think we've removed that both from the override and... But you're still putting in seven grand per server, so, right. the, so the question is, the, the justification for that seven grand or 7,500 for the server was to, in lieu of the hosting, but it's already hosted somewhere today. Well, they haven't upgraded as of yet. 
Who uh, hasn't upgraded? The assessors have not upgraded to the new Vision software. <laughs> they still have to do that. That's a, a so that's not compatible to where it's hosted right now is what you're saying, the new software? What I've been told is that the, yes. That it, it is not compatible. Is so, so do we have to? So then here's another question I have. Software support, the $6,000 line item, is for updates in software. So if we're going to a new version, is that because of the software support that we have there? And uh, I'm just trying to understand a little bit more because this is my business. It just doesn't seem to be adding up to me. It seems like a lot of costs there. And then the other thing I'd be concerned on is truly the $7,500 as being all, our all-in cost on that server over a five-year period when most corporations only depreciate servers over a three-year period. So, so my understanding is that um, the Vision software will no longer be supported. The current Vision software that the assessors have, which was never compatible with our current server that we have anyway. So um, there was a lot of rig and roll, if you speak, so to speak, to get that up and running when we switched to the new server a few years ago, which was kind of a disaster anyway. Um, so the new software is not compatible, one, with that server, and two, they're not going to support um, the version that they have now. And so if you, if it crashes or something happens, we lose all of our data. So they have to get that new software, which I think everyone's going for that, correct? Everyone's if I'm understanding. Going, yeah. Okay. That's a Dollar yeah. capital, so correct. Year. What's the six grand for this year? Why are we paying software support so when we're not being? What I'm hearing here is they're not supporting software. But no, no, but when th grand. they're not going to support the software that we currently have if we don't switch to the new system, correct? You know more. Yeah. So, or so Vision <laughs> is at Oracle base, and they are Oracle's going in a different direction. So we have to go more of a Microsoft um, base, and. So we have our maintenance fee, which is every year, and every year it increases. The 6000 that was taken out of the um, budget is for the cloud hosting and our backup as a server. So we don't have to use an in-house server. Everything gets backed up to the cloud. So, And this actually happened when I was here. Um, everything crashed. Everything was gone. Fortunately, they were able to get in, but that was after I had to call Art to have him on call so they could communicate to each other. So that is, um, so the 15,000 is for version 8. That's, that's the one that's. Year the, this year. It's, it's next year. So the six grand is just to remain in software support this year. Six grand for software support, 6,000 also for the hosting, the hosting uh, which was taken out. Understand. So, okay. So the cost that we're, we're kind of getting ripped off there. If the cost of the software is 15 grand, they're charging you 6,200 for one year of support. That's 50%. And industry average is about 20%. Um, but and I'd really, I'm going to offer my support on that because I'd, I'd love to look at that server for you guys. I understand now you're being forced into a Microsoft yes. uh, database, Google database, away from an Oracle database. Yes, so and we all are. And Every I'd community love to help that you has on that configuration. So I just wanted to understand that. It seemed like we were getting a double dip, but something to think about for next year. You got 15 grand plus the six grand in software support, so it'll really be that's a twenty-one thousand dollars. Yeah, so it'll be a twenty-one thousand dollar line item next year for the software guys. Capital expense. Yeah. So the last point we had, and this is this is kind of late to the game, um, postage. So we pay forty-seven cents a stamp. Have we ever looked at bulk postage? At like sixteen, seventeen, eighteen cents. Do we already have bulk postage? Yeah. But do we have a bulk postage rate? Bulk postage rate, you have to consolidate X amount of pieces. Right. Uh, and I work for the state. We have to hire somebody to send out our first class mail to be consolidated with other people in Hartford. Mm -hmm. And we have about a million pieces coming and going. Right. So we don't have any kind of volume to get anything we, more. We can do a little lower rate instead of like 49, 47, but we can't get the 19, well, actually, we save five cents. So instead of 48, we pay 43. <coughs> but we so have a consolidator that we again. hire and we split okay. the cost with. Yes, so, so good thought. The towns that are also looking for a non profit postage rate. 
Well, that's different than a bulk rate. Well, well no, at a minimum of 200 pieces in the new set. Right. Which turns out to be 16 or 19 cents a piece. So there is a difference. Uh -oh. I'm a little worried about that. Yeah. Bulk rate, we have to have a special permit with a bulk yeah, rate plate. And we have to have money in the bulk reserve at the post office. So all of that ultimately should cut this bill in half. Yeah, right? if we want to take money and, and put it on the account so they can draw from, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a process, not as easy, but it's, it's worth looking into, I suppose. If, I don't know that we have the, the volume. Those were our major items from that group, unless there's anything else. Can I ask another question? Um, I guess it's of Ed or Vicki. Uh, can you just explain about the audit? That's exactly what I was going to ask as well. The now uh, is the time. The 22500 Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So back probably mm, three years ago, we um, had on our bylaw, it said we, should, we shall have a state audit done every year. But the state got rid of audits. The state would come and audit your books for free every year. That got, you know, that was a long time ago. So, so a citizen petition went in, got the signatures to change the bylaw to be a, you know, third party audit every year. So that's one of our bylaws. Um, when I first came here, we hadn't, this was in 2012, we hadn't had an audit in a few years. At that point, we were going to, do one every other year. You know, that was kind of what the select board and myself and, uh, you know, at that time decided. But then the bylaw got changed in our, you know, our, our bylaws. And so now we've been doing it every year. The 22.5 is actually the same rate that they charge us this year. They weren't going to charge us any more for next year. And because two years ago we went and did a full financial audit where we um, included our fixed assets in that particular. Um, that's why the price has gone up a little bit every year due to that piece. Um, but it's pretty competitive with other audit firms around. Um, what but if we uh, don't do it, what's the ramifications? We just violate our bylaws. <laughs> so. Or, or change them. Yeah, you can change. Yeah, you could petition to change it too. Do one every other year, whatever. I mean. I, yeah. Well, that, that's a good question, yeah. Well, I think... <laughs> I guess I don't mind having audits because it's easy for me to know what we can improve on, what we need to, you know, what we need to do financially better, you know, every year. Um, obviously, I've been doing this for quite a while, but I don't know everything because not everything's come across my desk. So if there's something that I not familiar with, you reach out to the DOR law, you reach out to the DOR, the DLS, other ac accountants, and you do the best that you can, but they always might find something, well, hey, you could do this a little better, or you should do this better, or new statutes have come out, and you need to make sure that you get this paperwork from people, or that you look for this backup. So, I mean, if you've looked at our audit reports over the years, they've gotten a lot better since when we first, you know, kind of came to pass. So, the things that are on there now are, are pretty easily, um, you know, explainable on things that you'll work on, but um, I think they're always good to have. I mean, if you're in that dire straits, then well, you well, can cut well, it. But what you're saying, it seems like the issues were up here, now they're down here. Correct. So having an audit every other year, I mean, might it, not be. It, a, it seems like it, yeah. it's kind of a, I'll say, waste of money because things are going well. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to go five years. No, no, no. Of course but not. Two years. It seems like that's you know that's a doable thing. It's I not say. unreasonable. Yeah. Would the audit at two years be an uh, annual audit or a two-year audit? It would be annual for that year. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you just wouldn't be audited for a year. We just yeah. wouldn't be audited for that year. Now, part of that, too, is part of our um, continuing disclosure for certain bonds that we've borrowed on, we need to have that financial audit, mm -hmm. you know, th th that paperwork. They want that audit every year. So if you did it every other year, they might be okay with it. I'd have to ask the financial advisor that piece. Did so you the state would come in and do it for free? No, they used to. They used to. Oh, yeah, they used to. They used to do a lot of things for free, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you really don't want the, audit, the state to come and audit your books because that means you're doing something really wrong. <laughs> so it seems like a good um, quality standard to have. But on the other hand, if we get to the point of a, a non-override budget, you know, that might be a place to look. Right, and there's still $34,000 in the hole. Yeah. Do you wish to take and 
instruct the town administrator to, to redraft the bylaw to be every other year and ask Vicki to find out from the financial institutions that they'll accept an every other year bylaw. And that way we'll have something for town meeting. And if it doesn't work, we just strike it as an article. I, I put the motion forward. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. And uh, maybe we ought to consider um, funding half of it each year. So we're not hit, hit by 22 You can't hours. do that. Can't, can't, can't carry forward like yeah. that. <laughs> we did that and got in trouble. <laughs> Been there, done that. We did that and got in trouble, so. Uh, it was before I got here. <laughs> yes. I'm just wondering, Ed, do you have a comment about that? Would that be in my 37th or 38th hour during the 24-hour day? <laughs> well, let it roll to the next day. <laughs> I meant, do you have a comment about the audit frequency? <laughs> you open the door. Any more discussion on that? I don't know if that's a good question. I can ask our auditors what they do in terms of. I was just asking the question, what towns don't so we're the only community in the state that doesn't. Well, she'll find that out when she asks. Yeah, yeah so I'll, I'll email Tanya and so ask her. Perhaps the, the bylaw, we find out it's non-functional. It's easy enough not to, to do anything with it. But when we do town warrant, if we don't have the article, and I go up there to explain to Robert that we want to do this, he gets all kinds of. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 So are we going to leave the 22 in there, 25 this year? Then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We can modify on the floor if we have to, right. if we find out that there's something we can do. Thank you, Vicki. Any more comments from the select board on general government? Uh, I, I have one a general comment, and it kind of, uh, when Mike uh, was saying about the gas and electric and telephone, we started the, this basis with a fiscal 18 approved town meeting. We went to a fiscal 19 request, then we went from there. The telephone and the gas and electric stick out because you've got fiscal 18, eight grand, then you got 19 requests, eight grand, then you got level service, and the same same with the gas and electric. So my general question is, you know, did we look at the actual year-to-date budget for fiscal 18 rather than take the approved town meeting? For instance, if gas and electric was approved for fiscal 18 at 27,000, and year-to-date, if we extrapolate it to the end of June, it's going to be 22,000. Why use a number of 27? Why don't we use actual year to date? It's pretty close to the 27,000. I think that was both of them. Well, I mean, that was one example. I mean, the yeah. whole process, because we know things go up and down like this all the time. And is it better to use actual year to date, and again, extrapolate to the end of the year, rather than go with just what was approved last year? Because we know things change. Or well, but I mean, we want the truth in lending type of situation where we know what is what you need. You know, if for instance, I know you, your budget, you probably need more, but if somebody else's budget was under by 10 grand and they can still do that next year, that 10 grand can go to somebody else. You know, I did that with the utilities because right. that's something that, you know, you budget 27, you think, okay, or your budget eight. So then you go through and we've paid eight months so far and you extrapolate what it would be. And they're both pretty close to what we budgeted last year, a couple hundred bucks. Uh, how about like other expenses, overtime wages, all that stuff, because those are the uh, police overtime wages. Chief here? Still? Yeah. He was, was here. Okay. Chief's here. So if we budget overtime wages for $20,000 to take a number, and last year he had 30000 and this year we say it's going to be twenty again, we're putting him in a corner. I mean, so... I, I'd rather know exactly what we're up against rather than just guessing, because at the end of the year, halfway through the year, it just kills us. I guess I didn't do that with, with department head, you know, other departments' expenses. I went through most of the utilities, the general expenses for the town itself, and kind of went through that, and, it, you know, it was pretty close to what it was this year. Um, you know, the equipment, technology equipment, could be taken down because do we really need new computers? You know, we thought we were going to replace the ones, and so we didn't. The services we kept the same because if we get that contract for IT, we might not need to pay those individual two hundred dollar at a pop pieces every time he comes here. Yeah. But the equipment you c we took, I think we took that down a thousand dollars because you know not everyone's computer is on that cycle of that 
are having to get replaced. I know Joyce, my assistant, needs um, uh, some new st equipment. You know, people's monitors burn out. So that kind of stuff you kind of have to keep in there. Um, but because everyone doesn't need a whole new system, that got taken down a little bit. But with, you know, other individual departments' expenses, I, I didn't do that with them. That's kind of their gig, I guess. Yeah. When they put their budget together, they should have looked at their expenses to understand what they need, what they not, didn't need. The average person, though, isn't going to decrease their budget. I mean, it's, it's kind of the state spending mentality. You push them into a corner. If they don't spend it, you don't give it to them. So, you know, they're between a rock and a hard place, you know. Or, or but we got to look at uh, so you gotta you gotta look at that. I mean, Randall's behind you. Winter Rose is probably a good example. If we budget ten thousand next year and he spent twenty for the last three years, what good is it going to do to budget ten thousand this year? He's going to be short, you know. So I want to be realistic when we go for this override. But that's just a general comment. Uh -huh. okay. We're focusing on general government. What about a general comment about the entire process? I'm going to open that up in a minute. I just want to get finance and the select board sort of together. <coughs> yeah, we have one last thing we were going to talk about is the $10,000 um, conservation commission agent. Right. And we haven't discussed that yet. Right. For so the override section. So is the boards comfortable if I open it up to the public now? I just have one more comment about that, and I mentioned this the other night, is that right now we're funding a senior center director under a grant, and yet we're uh, moving a position from a grant over to the operating budget, so I'm not entirely comfortable with that either. Okay, but that's not under general government. It is, because the conservation agent is. Public time on general government. Anyone? Randall, you wanted to do an overall? Please feel free. <laughs> I'm trying to give everyone an opportunity. I just don't want to go in 12 different directions at the same time. So just generally, Randall Kemp, Highway Superintendent. I'm trying to wrap my head around how we're going to. The override budget is a cut in services. I, I, I don't know how, how we're, what are we going to cut? Are we going to be a light switch community and just shut when the lights go off, nobody responds? I mean, it just, so we've got a pothole. You don't want me to fill a pothole. Somebody's going to run into that pothole, damage their vehicle, and then we're going to have an insurance claim. That's not going to save us any money. If we have to have an officer at a tree that's down until my department comes in in the morning to move the tree at 7 a.m., that officer's not available to move. If we're beholden to the school to be funded first, it should be prioritized. School, public safety, town administration, and then if you don't have money to fund the rest, you don't fund the rest. That's my opinion. Good evening. You've got a tough situation ahead of you. Barbara Laflamme, 20 Cook Road. I think it's a mistake not to have the annual audit. One of the biggest benefits from having an annual audit is the management letter. The management letter tells you, our financial officers and leaders, where the weaknesses are in the system. And if you pay attention to that, you sometimes keep, avoid problems. It's a very beneficial part of an audit. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Tamara Lunas, 298 College Highway. Ed, can you explain what the last item in there, the reverse 911 system, of almost four thousand dollars, that's that's the code the, code red. The telephone yeah. call that goes out. Right, exactly. Well, lately we haven't been getting any of those, but the police and the fire and town hall has been communicating to quite a few residents through Facebook. 
our Southampton community page that I'm an admin for. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to get a lot of information out to people quickly that way. But I know it doesn't help if there's no electricity. But is there a way to look at that, that, that $4,000 expense right there? Go ahead. As the emergency manager director for the town, that reverse 91 system is for, quote, emergencies of the town. The problem is defining what an emergency is. Saying that the water line is broken on East Street is not an emergency of the entire town. And it all depends on, not to pick on the water commissioners, if we say to us, well, we'll have this fixed in a couple hours, it really doesn't get to that level of an emergency. But, but there was a uh, dog thing done on the 911, the code red. I know that, and I wasn't here uh, and responsible for that at the time. We tried to take and use that for emergencies because the problem happens is if you keep using that 911 reverse for just messages, mm. people ignore it. They get very complacent with the fact that this is an emergency and, and they just ignore it. So we try to utilize that for emergency situations. We basically are putting our emergency plans together in this town right now. In fact, mm -hmm. there's a meeting Wednesday afternoon at two o'clock if you would like to sit in with all the department heads relative to <coughs> this. Part of the report to the state is that we have that code red system to alert our residents. Okay. One of the things we don't have that we used to have was a siren on the fire station to alert people. There's a lot of communications we used to have that over the years we've moved on to Facebook. But as soon as the power goes out. You use your phone. And then you can't <laughs> charge it. And it, it just keeps multiplying. Unfortunately, in my career, I've gone to many a disasters. Yeah. That's why we try to hold that okay. code red. Well, I just wanted a emergency communications. Very good. Thank so you. I really think that the uh, seniors in town really need to have a system that works for them. I don't think they would be le uh, as inclined to use Facebook and some of the other social media. Uh, Matt and then Chief. Okay. I just had something on that. Or Matt wants I'm to. I'm happy to have you go, Chief. Go first. It's going to be quick. I'll go. Um, in regards to the pr the monies for the code red, um, I can look in with the 911 department with the 911 grant that I apply for every year um, and see if that would be something that we could put onto the grant and have it covered. One of the comments that came back to us from Mass Emergency Management was they felt that that was a staple that was required in the town budget and shouldn't be coming out of soft money grants. Okay. That's why we saw it move over there. Does that mean it can't, or are they just suggesting? Don't know. That's why I said I could I mean, call if it's and possible, sure. find out if that's something they yeah. look I into. I don't see us getting penalized, but I understand why they're going in the direction they're going. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it's there. Okay. Yeah, I think it's great. Thanks. <clears throat> I think they just don't want it to be cut because grants are cut. But if it's yeah. something that would be able to pick up if it wasn't grant funded, I think it's worth having it be on the grant. Sure. So thank you. So Matt Rowland, 16 Mountain Road. I'm just going to stick to the, the general stuff right now, and we'll get into the other departments. But um, overarching comment, and I'll get to the detail about my opinion on the conservation uh, money. But so we got two budgets, a balanced budget and an override budget. And some of you that have been here for these meetings know that both of these budgets are not exactly ideal, including the override one. The issue, it obviously, is is that the town never passes an override budget, so we, we really need it this year. It's, it's crystal clear that we need this. And so, I, as a citizen, I know that the override budget is not a best-case scenario for everyone in every department. But I can tell you that it is significantly better than a balanced budget. It's way better. Okay. And so... Rather than fight amongst each other and f fight amongst the departments, what we need to put together is to, as a two scenario. The worst case scenario is going to it's going to come. I mean, we have to get the thirty thousand dollars. It's going to happen, and we're going to find it. And it's going to be really painful on the balance side. 
On the override, though, we need to be able to put something to the town that they can actually get behind and support. And it can't have any fluff in it, or we're just not going to get there. It really can't. And it can't even necessarily be a best case. It has to have really good optics to where we're doing the best that we can, we're barely scraping by, and we're doing at at, at minimum or best what we did last year. And then we'll talk about years going forward after that. And so that whittles down to the detail of the Conservation Commission, which I firmly believe in, and perhaps we need to take a look at this in years ahead. I just don't know is that it can be a selling point on an override this year, given given that it's in the neighborhood of a half a million dollars and we need just so much more. Um, I mean, the other things that are in there like are kind of absolute musses. It involves people. It involves services. I just I feel like something that we haven't had before shouldn't be in the override if we're really going to ask the town citizens to vote for this. Okay. Just, I just one more question. Uh, I earmarked here. The, going back to the treasurer collector salary, I think now is an opportunity where we can put a decrease in here because there's nobody in that position. And, you know, even if we save $5,000, that's $5,000. So when a person runs for the office, they're going to know what the salary is. He did. That's what did I ask? There is a decrease. What do you mean? 5000 Well, that's on the non-override budget. Yeah, but it's on the override too. Yeah. The override is 54 and 581 I think we should put it in the override budget saying we're looking at this position, we're decreasing it. It's yeah. a $50,000 position. Okay. I mean, I, yeah, I agree. So am I hearing this as a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Read the motion. The motion is that we reduce the treasure collector salary in the fiscal year 19 override budget. Uh, as well as the fiscal year 19 non override budget to, I'll say, an even $50,000. By your second? I second it already. So just making sure. Yeah. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. <laughs> well, I just, like just rounded it off. 49581, I just rounded it off in both. It should have been 49.99, but. He's not like that. Well, that, because that was $5,000 more than that. Actually. I understand. Now we automatically get more than You can blame him in the future. So the total in the future. Of that line is what? <laughs> 50,000. 50, yeah. both, 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 both are 50. Yeah. So, so we're saving, you know, over level services, almost $6,000. And now we're down to $29,000, yeah. $8,000 almost. Yeah. Now, um, Right. So, I would, I would, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so let's talk, yeah. let's talk well, about I the, the 50,000. <laughs> it all slides downhill, you know. Yeah, why don't you round down? Instead of saying, in, instead of saying I increased it to 50, why don't you say I decreased it to 50? That sounds much nicer. If, I'll be happy to amend my motion to make it 49,581 on yeah. both of those, if that's helpful. And I'll second that if you want. Just keep it the same. All in favor? Yeah. See, Vicki, your voice has been heard. <laughs> so can we get to the Conservation Commission agent? Because we've been throwing this back and forth. I think we need to take some action either way. Mm -hmm. motion. Well, I think it's important, but I think in this case here, um, we have to show the townspeople that mm -hmm. we, we mean business and we're going to be, I mean, we're cutting ambulance service, we're cutting firemen, policemen, I think uh, we should be removed that. Yep. I'll make that motion. Okay. Right here, a second? I'll second it. And the motion is to strike the $10,000 in the budget? Correct. Yep. All budgets. Yep. Discussion? Oh. All in favor? Aye. Okay, that's unanimous too. So that was about 39K right out of that total, I think. Well, we're talking 22.5, uh, roughly five for the oh, treasurer in the 10 okay. years. Mike, don't tell me you're coming to protest. No, I thought we were moving on to public safety. Oh, I heard about that. Yes. <laughs> he 
So. Strike the yes, Michael. Yet have we? I was just moving on. If we're still. Okay, we are now going to move to the next yeah, section. If there's more, I can sit down. I was just oh, getting yeah. up. Okay, we're going to take it out. We're going to take it out. do it at town meeting. Well, let's talk about that then. Let's go back to general. Sorry, Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. So <laughs> I, I, would, I would make a motion, but let's talk it through first, that we remove the 22-5 for the audit pending the approval we get from, who are you going to check with, Vicki? Well, why don't you check with us? See if, if it's okay every other year? Yeah. But this will have the audit, though. Okay. Okay, so let's let's make a decision. I'll, I'll make a motion that we remove it uh, from the budget going forward, unless we come up with some legal reason or not well, to. Well, the other part of that argument is, is if we end up with free cash in the winter, we could refund that then with the free cash. Well, I guess the, the thing is the town, and I, Matt, I guess was saying it, the town needs to see we're making moves to do these things. And I think that's a move that we can show them. So I, I have the motion on here, if anybody wants to second it, we can go from there. I'll second it for discussion. Okay. So. I'm not comfortable with that. Right. I, I'm just, just a discussion. So, we take out the 225 now, and we end up with a balanced budget tonight. Mm hmm. And then the letter comes back, it just, the kink in our work there. No, it's just a matter of changing the bylaw. Yeah. Yeah, but we were going to send a letter, or you're going to um, check to see if. Well, you know, there's no law that says you have to have an audit every year. I was just going to check because Mike mentioned it to see how many other communities do them every year or every other year. But the 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 kink would be, you take it out, and people say, "Oh, well, that's a bylaw. Why are you violating our bylaws?" And they think it should be put back in. That's the only issue that I see that people have. I guess have. my response would be a half a teacher, a half a policeman, a half a, you know, something. I, I know. I'm just, there's those people that are going to be out there that'll say that, okay. you know. And if they think <clears throat> that we're in financial dire straits, which is not really related to the audit, they might think, well, why are you getting rid of the audit? You're trying to hide something? Like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, you're going to get those people who are kind of well, wacky thinkers. Let's, let's let those people, in my opinion, let those people go to go to the town meeting and present their case yeah, yeah. and put it there. And if they want to put it back in, let them take a vote. But right now, we're cutting it. We're trying to, you know, that's yeah, you can't my put opinion. It back. You can't put it back in. Because <laughs> then you got to find extra revenue. Night, right? You yeah. can't put it So, I mean, I don't, like I said, our audits have been really good. They've been better than they have in years. And we're not cutting out the audit. We're just going every other year. We'll have an answer for the town meeting. So, yeah. um, Ed, what would you recommend? You've, have you seen this before? You've seen audits every year or every other year? I've seen them every year. I've seen them every other year. Every third year. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't want to do them any other than every other year mm -hmm. because the flip side of that is even doing them every other year you're probably going to drive up the cost of the audit a little bit mm -hmm. because now they're going to have to do some work on the interim year to get to where they are uh, but you know it, it's not the worst of worlds i mean the flip side of that is yeah where where are we with bonding and what have you because oh yeah the, the disclosure with, yeah, yeah with the disclosure because with some of those um, yeah, they want to see the annual audits. Sometimes they take my unaudited balance sheet, but all right. I just wanted to clarify. That's all. Virginia. <coughs> Virginia, <coughs> excuse me. Virginia, our twenty-seven Foma Road. <coughs> and a member of the current bylaw review committee. I don't think we can pass a bylaw at the town meeting and have it go into effect immediately. It has to go into the attorney general's office. So it's not going to affect this budget. Well, if, if you're worried about the bylaw, 
it's not going, I, I don't see how you can pass it and pass the budget at the same time and have the Attorney General say, oh yeah, yeah, that's okay. Because if they say no, or if it takes six months to get back, I mean, I, I think just think about it. What we would be doing that. is violating the bylaw, then trying to correct it down the road. But I don't know if there's any penalties for violating the bylaw. I don't know that there are either. <laughs> so that would be my, <laughs> you know, if you're going to take the audit out, be aware that you are going to have to violate the bylaw, mm -hmm. the current bylaw. Right. That doesn't mean you shouldn't go ahead and try to change it. Could we put a warrant on the town meeting for a bylaw for the audit to be every, a bylaw for the audit to be every other year, oh, yeah. included in the override only budget, and then if it doesn't pass, uh, take it out. That gets complicated. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you if you do a bylaw change, my mind, you do the bylaw change, you violate your own bylaw, but town meeting voted in that bylaw, and if town meeting approves the budget, that's a signal from the town that they're accepting the fact that they're violating their own yeah. bylaw. Mm. And then you can work on changing it, right. but it's not anything you vote the same day, night right. as you vote the budget. Right. But I don't understand if the if the townspeople are voting in favor of an audit only every other year at the town meeting, um, and it's in there as an override only item. Why would it be a conflict if the townspeople are now redeciding that we don't need it every year, we only need it every year, and then if the override doesn't pass, then we take it out because and now we have a bylaw that says every other week, every other year. Yeah. Yeah. My guess is that you can do it that way because a lot of our bylaws are violated from time to time and they're not followed up on. <laughs> this is a positive note to make. Uh, <laughs> if you have an article, my, my mind here, if you have an article that says that this bylaw passes contingent on an override ballot election vote, the ballot vote is two weeks after town meeting. Mm -hmm. It's just messy. It's just. <laughs> I just had a question. Time. Cheryl Fletcher Gunn wrote. Um, Vicki mentioned that it was a competitive rate for doing the mm -hmm. audit. Do you have any options for? I know you know different accounting firms are different. I know you said it's competitive, but if somebody else comes in, yes, there's a learning curve, but. Maybe it's a five thousand dollars savings. I mean, I, I I absolutely think it's important, but I'm just thinking: is there only one accounting firm that has to conduct the audit? No, there's other firms out there. Um, I guess for me personally, this is uh, this is, I guess, a firm that most communities use because they're very well respected, and I can at any point in time during the year email them with questions that I have, how do I do this, how do I do that, yeah. you know, and I guess it would take me a few years because I've built this up over five or six years to get that with some, with another particular audit firm, you know, there are some that are in Worcester and Boston, yeah. there's Scanlon, which is up in South Deerfield, which really does the, um, sorry, I know I got to be this way, <laughs> really does the, um, <laughs> um, the Franklin County ones, but um, that's something to look at, um, like I said, it's just, preferential for me because I feel very comfortable with asking them questions and getting answers I know are correct from them. So I guess one thought in, in the And you had them in Beckett too. Yeah. Melanson and Heath. I had them in Beckett, I had them in West Springfield. Yeah. yeah. In the procurement process, usually when you go back to somebody who has a sole source say I'm getting competitive quotes, oftentimes it actually goes down with the same firm. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't hurt to, mm -hmm. to find out. I think it's a good thought, Cheryl. Yeah, no, thank you. Okay. Does the finance committee have a comment about that item? Um, in terms of the audit being annual or every two, every, th every three, I think doing what is best for the town, I think we've been proactive on making adjustments to what we've done in the audits. Um, you know, we have slimmed it down. I think now we're more, we're 
kind of in like a paperwork phase of the audits. We're tightening up on things, our investment policy, which we have written, but we don't necessarily have written stamped with the seal in the building, right? Um, I think whether it's a year or every two years, like Ed said, I think that's appropriate. Every three, I think, becomes an issue. Um, and then regarding the procurement of services, I, you know, it's something we always talk about. I think we've talked about for a few years. I don't want to mention this for Ed's responsibility, but maybe it's something we do start looking into, you know, going out to bid for some of our services that we talk about yearly. Hey, we should get more bids, but we just haven't had the resources um, to do so. so. That's when the CPO comes in, Ed. <laughs> well, yes, it does. <laughs> One last comment, Vicki kind of made a comment to it in passing on the auditing is I know in my business if you want credit you have to have audited financials and, and my concern is not having an audited financials is that going to hurt us when we try to get credit anywhere this year and and if that answer is we're not going for a lot of credit this year then I would support it but we've, we've, we've got to make sure we don't bite our nose off to spite our face here and not audit it and then can't get a loan anywhere because we don't have audited financials. I'm going to call for a growler or financial advisor. I'm double-checking. Okay, because I, I know we, in our credit company, we will not even accept a credit app unless there's audited financials from a corporation. It's not that they wouldn't actually give you the money. They might jack a rate higher. Or decrease your bond. You got it. Which, again, you know, are we going to cost ourselves if we've got a big capital outlay more than 22 grand? Yeah, I guess uh, just a quick comment. I, I agree with you, Dan, uh, that if we don't have it, our ducks in line, but if we don't get the override budget into a, a amount that people are going to accept, when they do an audit or we want to get money loaned out, we don't have a police department, we don't have a fire, we don't have a highway department, that's going to take a lot more convincing to get a, a loan. An audit every other year I think would be a, a minor thing. If we had all the money in the world, I, I agree 100%, right. but we need to get this in a package that we can get past. Robert Floyd, 15 E Street, an observation. If you're going to violate a bylaw on purpose, you might want to ask how that will affect your success with the override. Well, I think we need to explain that up front to the people. Here's what we're doing. And if they don't agree, we, they'll have to put it back in the budget on the floor. Okay. Well, thank you. I have a motion. I have a second. Right. <laughs> we have discussion. Favor? Aye. Motion dies. Okay. So. We are now going to move into. Don't I say it? Man. Even when I say things, Mike, I still get tromped on. So it's like you know. Uh, Could I just say something about that? You know I would. I, mean? I would still. I would still prefer though that. I don't want to violate a bylaw. I don't want to hurt our bond rating. Obviously, the idea of having an annual audit was brought about in the past because of difficulties. I'd like to believe that we're in a much better place, although <laughs> I'm not sure tonight. Um, but I still think it would be worth uh, having the town address whether or not in the future we want to go away from an annual audit. I have no problem with pushing a bylaw change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, we want to make this into a motion to move it forward? Pardon? You want to put that in a motion that we go ahead bylaw. and change the bylaw? We already did that. Yeah, we did that. That's, yeah. But that, that wasn't attached to my motion, right? Okay, yeah. so that's fine. Yep. My memory's getting... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone comfortable if I move into public safety now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're now moving into the category of public safety. We will hear from the chair of the Finance Committee. Michael Rosenberg, 144 East Street, Finance Committee. Um, so I will run down the list of kind of questions and items, and then we can go back and forth. Um, the first one we had, and this has come up um, at the finance team meeting and the finance committee meeting, John, you brought it up earlier with the police equipment maintenance. So the level service increase from 24,000 to 27,000, what does that increase entail? 
you know, what is in the $3,000 increase? Um, kind of specifically, is it actual equipment or is it equipment we need to know we need to maintain? Um, that's the first one. Police Chief is going to address your question, I hope. <laughs> so uh, that would entail um, tires for cruisers. Um, they're on state bid, but uh, they've gone up. Uh, the, the other thing is with the all-wheel drive vehicles. Um, they state that if you start getting, and this just happened, um, if you start getting a tire that is wearing, or a couple tires wearing down more significantly than the others, you need to replace those and you have to have equal tread all around the vehicle, otherwise you're going to have problems with the handling of the vehicle. So uh, I need to have more tires on hand because if I have a car that say has uh, 40,000 miles on it, 50,000 miles on it with a set of tires and then uh, we have a couple that either get a flat or uh, get worn down due to not being aligned, those have to be replaced and possibly all four depending on, you know, now we're going to have brand new treads for two and 50,000 mile tires in the other. So I wanted to plan ahead for that. Um, <clears throat> some of the part-timers that we've put on uh, to go towards uh, when, when the Bulletproof Vest grant is not going on uh, to be able to purchase uh, their regular vest uh, for them rather than wearing a used vest as some do when they first come on until uh, we, we can get them fitted for a brand new vest. Uh, the, other, the other thing was um, storage, a backup storage cloud, or, or I'm not an IT person, but uh, we are almost out of space with our uh, backup. And we definitely need to pay some attention to that. And uh, I, I, Ed, I've talked with you in regards to talking with the IT people. So at some point, uh, the IT people that we're using for the town hall, I'd like to speak with them and see if we can get on board uh, with them. And firearms qualifications. Uh, the state has gone up. Uh, there's a new mandate for different types of qualifications that we used to do. It requires a little more ammunition. So I wanted to also be able to purchase uh, that ammunition uh, for the qualifications. And that's basically what the three thousand dollars would be for. Thank you. Hey, Chief, before you leave, I got a question for you. If you don't sure. Mind. Okay, on the police department overtime, it goes back to my question originally. Uh, in general, we approve a town meeting fifty-seven request is sixty. What what is actual year to date, and how would that extrapolate? Going yes, we did. Um, 57, we went over 57 by, I think we're at 14, 14,000 uh, and some change. Um, however, just so everybody realizes, the, the overtime wages are part of our entire wage line. We guesstimate from years past of try, trying to guesstimate what the, a good number would be to put into the line. In the past, there was never an OT line. It was just part of wages. So now that we've broken it out, it kind of stands out. So I think you even said it earlier, John, that uh, you can't predict when overtime is going to happen. And we've actually had a pretty busy uh, time uh, over the last several months with overtime due to a lot of investigations. Uh, so. But I, I believe we are lower than last year. I think last year we had spent more at this time in overtime than we have this. So this is a good uh, guess. Now, on that overtime, the private duty, does that come out of the overtime? No. Private duty, road detail uh, work is paid by the companies that they work for. So it doesn't funnel through your budget and come back in the general fund? Now, there's a revolving fund specifically yeah, for point, road okay, So it doesn't show. Right. Yeah. And in fact, the details actually make money due to, uh, what is it, 10, administrative 10% 10 10 administrative fee for every single job. I don't know if the expense was here, but the income's not showing, so that's all of it's outside. Yes. 
Right, right. I, I also have uh, one of my officers, Officer Gove, who's now putting in several hours a week up at the Hampshire Regional as the uh, school resource officer. School is paying for that, and it gets paid out of our wages, our overtime wages, but then we get reimbursement uh, from them each month. So it's so in the Hampshire will... Regional. Yeah, it's in the Hampshire Regional budget. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, a shift. Yeah. yeah. Right, but what I'm saying, our, our overtime line, our overtime line is showing a little more than what we actually have spent. Okay. So it helps us locally. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Thanks. Thank you. So just a quick observation. Um, Heard Chief mentioned that they're spending some money on cloud hosting. I think this is maybe a prime opportunity that we ferret out in all the expense accounts across the uh, town what we're spending in IT and actually take a breath here because the $7,000 server, we might be able to add a couple hundred more dollars for some SSD on there, pulling that cloud hosting. I don't know if Randall's got some or, you know, the chief, uh, the fire chief too, but if we're going to go buy a server, let's look at this holistically and let's try to save some money. And I, I'm, again, more than willing to bring my resources to bear to help on this. Just need to see what we've got for, what we've got for uh, um, spend on this and really get a true read of that. Um, the next item for comment here was the building custodial wages. Um, so it was noted that there was a reduction in the general government line item related to that. Um, the reduction was $1,200. But then we have a $4,500 increase here. So I'm, I'm questioning whether or not this is level service or if there's an increased service in there for the custodial line. No. So this year there was 13247 and the budget for town hall custodial expenses is $9,100. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So the difference. Well, why'd we have, why'd we have 4500 here? 42, sorry. I'm just curious if we're including more for custodial services we're not. this year. It should be, it should be, it should have been exactly. Them out of that, so yeah. Just, yeah. just confirming there's no hour or wage increases. There's no hour, there's no hour. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it looks like there might be a couple hundred dollars difference, but that's it. Yeah, I'll recheck that now. Okay. Um, going down the line, um, I am going to go back to this as a, I guess, a three point item. So the articles voted at the special town meeting added increased costs going forward. The three articles for the, I'm sorry, the two articles for the fire, well three, the fire chief salary, the, what is it, the building expenses, fire department building expenses, and the EMT FD wages. Um, the article said that those would be offset with ambulance receipts, so I'm asking the question, are we confident that ambulance receipts will be able to offset those approved increases at special town meeting or will they be coming from the you know the general revenue versus what was specified at the meeting Ed, your team's been working on that. Vicky's probably got a better handle on that than I do as far as I know with the revenues that we can only appropriate what we've already got on hand um, mm -hmm. which is somewhat of an issue we are for currently forecasting we'll have a hundred thousand dollars available as of July 1st um, and even though we have revenues coming in in July August September October November December they have to build up again before you can actually appropriate them to offset okay so my second part to that question um, if you go by FY18 approved town meeting, if you were to add 
FD wages, EMT standby, EMT wages, it's $368,000 approximately. We then increase EMT wages by $56,000 at the special town meeting. Um, if you look at level service and override budget, the number is $473,000. So my question is why if we, if we appropriated or if we approved $56,000 at special town meeting to be funded through ambulance receipts, why did it go up $110,000? If it's level service, I could see why you'd have the 368 plus the 56. Um, Fire Chief John Workman. Uh, there was money appropriated at the first town meeting that we had, the annual town meeting, that went into that budget to offset some costs. We've been just skirting uh, losing our accreditation for paramedic level service. So at this last town meeting, because we can only uh, get money that's in the account, we couldn't take it all at the initial town meeting because the money wasn't completely there. So at the last town meeting, we took the additional money that was necessary to keep the ambulance functioning, um, and that's why it's that number, but that's why it goes up by that amount for the new fiscal year because it includes not two appropriations done separately, but all put into one. So the FY18 approved town meeting number does not have the separate appropriation in there? When you say the FY, you mean the 217? So the meeting we had last June, mm -hmm. we established the budget. Does this, you have the column there, but is yep. what we appropriated in there, Yep. that whatever article, right? Yeah, know. it is an increase because we increased that with money that was appropriated. Right, so if the budget calls for $100,000, and we had an article last June that added $40,000. The FY18 budget should have 150000 in there. But it appears that it doesn't, so I'm asking the question, does the FY18 line item here okay. include the June increase, and then we have the January increase in the second column, okay. Can I just speak There's to There's a delta of $60,000, $55,000 between FY18 approved plus FY18 approved special town meeting to the override budget. Right. Right. So they should be equal, but there's, by math, there's an increase there. Yeah, I mean, Vicki can probably speak more to numbers exact. I know that the money that was appropriated and that are put into the budget is so that we don't lose our accreditation as a paramedic level ambulance service. So um, we can certainly argue whether we take money out and then lose our ambulance service for paramedic. I mean, that's, I'm you know. Not I'm not arguing about the, the service itself. I'm, I'm okay. trying to figure out what the level okay. funded costs. Well, I'm, I'm getting text saying, it, People can't hear all these people here, so can whoever wants to talk, can you go up to the podium, please? I'm asking the question, what is the level service cost for that? Because if you add FY18 plus the special town meeting, it's different than the override budget level service number. So I want to make sure whatever the number is for the level service, it's accounted for in here, and we're not increasing or we're not missing something in the previous columns. There's a... So are you asking if 227 number. is the accurate level service amount? I'm asking if 473,000 is the accurate amount versus the 368 from 18. So then you add the 56, so you're at Which four. two are you, are you adding two together or three together? What was that number? I'm, I'm doing EMT standby and EMT wages. What are the ones that you I'm doing at? fire department wages, EMT standby, and I'm EMT wages. wages well. You have to add all three because the level service budget moves them around. Okay. You know, there's an increase with FD wages. There's a reduction in EMT wages, and then there's an increase in EMT. I'm sorry, reduction in EMT standby, and then an increase in EMT wages. So roughly 575. Yeah. Adding quickly. Yeah, part of the problem too is that we didn't do full level service throughout the year. So some of what was funded was underfunded if you were to look at it through an entire year. So as we appropriated money that was in the account, um, it funded only to a certain point, mm -hmm. only to certain levels. So there was an underfunding that was built in to what we were asking for um, just to uh, get us through ambulance inspections, bring the level of service up but not to fully fund it mm -hmm. to where the, 
the ambulance service is required to be. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be some discrepancy between what was funded in 18 and what level service funding is for 19 because we're we're now required to be at, the, at a higher level of service than we were, required, we were required to be in 2018. Okay. Of the 217 equals the original appropriation at town meeting and the $40,000 extra. Uh, okay, so that's that 217. That is the 217, yeah. correct. So it takes $60,000? for the other half of the year that we didn't fund? That's that's where the question is. Is, is that it? We're shaking our heads, but well, nobody really knows, right? No, so actually, we do know, yeah. and so okay. we're happy to you know speak to it. So yes, it, takes, it, it took additional funding to get us where we needed to go at the amounts that are written in. Okay. Okay. But it didn't fund for the whole year. It only funded, for funded last it for, the, yeah, for the parts of the year that it was acquired from, extending okay. out the rest of the year. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, the other item in here, I mean, conversationally, the this microphone keeps changing. Um, the increase creates some of our budgeting issues, right? Whether whether it is or it isn't in there, it does add to the deficit that we're facing this year. So, it is something to keep in mind. The last thing on here, and I'm saying this just for, because I said it for the others as well, the building inspector salary increase. We increased something at a special town meeting. We're now faced with a deficit the following year. Is it something we continue to have in there? I'm just raising the question. And that's it. Anything else from finance? I just want to underscore uh, Mike's point that um, you know, when we go in front of the town meeting, we ask for a one-time move of free cash in certain areas. I don't think that should be considered a level funding going forward. So I, I would agree with Mike that we need to probably pull some of that stuff back and, and look at where we were before that. And if I could just speak to the fact that if we don't consider the money that was put into the ambulance as level funding, then it's in effect taking the ambulance service away from Southampton. So if that's your proposal, that's what you're saying. It's what we're facing. I understand what we're facing, but w I don't understand why you're trying to burden the fire department with the bulk of that. There's, a, there's certainly a good chance that if we go to the non-funded, um, it'll be difficult to move the ambulance service forward. So I think it's just trying to go from a level funded, and everyone feels the burden if it's uh, a non-funded two and a half override. No, and, I, and I understand, Chief, and I'm just trying to be equitable across. I, I spoke out against the increase of the um, CONSCOM, you know, same thing, building inspector, same thing. So I'm being equitable. I mean, it's times that we got to tighten our belts. I'm just saying, and, and, and I was the one, if you remember, at the town meeting trying to get in front of this and saying, guys, this is going to come up and bite us again. We've got to sure. watch what we're doing with our cash, and then additionally, we could have swung some of that cash to offset this, and that, 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 yeah. that's all. That's all. I'm not picking yeah. our truth in no, the service. No, 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 and, 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 and it's just, it's, it's just a, a, a difficult scenario just because the, in order to fully fund the ambulance, we had a, a timeline to do it in, and unfortunately that timeline fell into our budget constraints that we're now faced with, and to fund it, we very creatively reached into every pocket of uh, money that was available to meet the state standards. So it was unfortunate that we don't have money, and that's what we were trying to do to keep the ambulance service functioning. Um, but once we brought it up through those town meeting votes to that level of funding to keep the ambulance service where it really needs to be in order to keep it a paramedic level service, it's level funded. To take it away would be to then lose that paramedic service. Gentlemen, yeah. Thank you both, but you're really supposed to be addressing the chair, and we're supposed to be. And what I'm watching is evolving into nobody's introducing themselves at the mic, and it's a dialogue between audience individuals. Okay. Another board here. We just don't have the luxury. I, I know, and and I don't know how I we. Know, would, so I don't know how we don't have able. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. like. We fly in here. That's all. All right. You're going to get a table next time. <laughs> <laughs>
Talk about the supply of our staff. Fly the tables ourselves. Here's your budget line item. That's right. Uh, okay. I'm Fran never going to win this, you know. No. Francine Tishman, Finance Committee. I just have a, a question for, <laughs> for Mike about the uh, communication wages and whether or not we have maxed out the 9-11 grant money in applying it to the communication wages. Vicki, I guess it's more for you. Um, so basically how the Vicki Morrow Town Account in Pomeroy Meadow Road, basically how the 9-11, E-9-11 grant works. The chief applies for it. We have a certain time period which we can use, but it's a reimbursable grant. So we, ne we can't necessarily take out the wages from our general fund budget to think we're going to get the grant and put it towards that grant. What happens at the end of the year is I have to send all the documentation in, he applies for a certain dollar amount, and you send all the documentation in, then they'll send you a check in the mail, or they'll EF, you know, they'll send it to the bank. And so that's when I'll take the wages away from communications and put them towards um, that grant, which leaves that line item for other tr budget transfers within the end of year process, if that happens, or it falls into free cash, one or the other. But you don't really want to budget less than when you think you're going to get that grant in the anticipation, because if you don't, then you're kind of stuck. And it's about $18,000. So you know, it's a reimbursable grant that he applies for. More than likely we get it, but it's reimbursable. So they have to show that we, you know, pay those expenses first. So. And then at the end of the year, when you apply whatever amount they got in the grant to that wage line, uh -huh. so also that ends up in Where are you? Francine uh, Tishman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it ends up in free cash, or we can use it to transfer okay. to other particular okay. budget lines. Just one thing. This is way too late in the, the evening to suggest this, but do you guys want to come around this table and take this microphone? It would have been a good thought in the beginning, you know? It might be the way to go. Charlie, could I just get a couple things? I, I don't want to start a big debate, but I just want to be clear on what we're getting for service. So I'd just like to ask the fire chief a couple questions. If yeah, you guys yes, mind sir. coming up? Just for I'm clear on what we're going to get for service, um, if the override passes fiscal 19 budget, are we going to have one, two, or three shifts paramedic ambulance? Um, from my understanding of the override passing, we will have uh, two shifts with two people and a third shift with one and then a standby as it was currently funded last. Okay, so those numbers support that? Yes. I'm, okay. Yeah. Second question is if the override doesn't go through, what are we going to have? That's challenging. Um, if it doesn't go through, it really uh, will depend on how the state, if they will allow us any flexibility because we will not be at the levels as mandated by the state for paramedic level service. So. Um, there's a very good chance if we lose paramedic service, we also lose the income, which we have a revenue of almost $200,000 uh, generated from the paramedic level service um, that could easily be cut by $100,000. If I'm reading this correctly, if the override doesn't pass, we are going to go back to basic EMT service and we're going to go back to being a call department. In other words, you call an EMT who's at home that drives to the fire station to bring the ambulance or the fire truck to whatever they need. Yeah. So if you have a heart, they're going to be rolling backwards. Yeah. If you had a heart attack, you could wait. You could wait 15 minutes. That's the it. Budget is estimated for that point. Whatever yeah. the response will call. Well, still yeah, there's still a shift there. Yeah. Right? The, the, the challenge can't becomes. Hear you, Mike, so it's. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ex so excuse me. If I, yeah, oh, okay. Uh, with <laughs> Mike. Well, first of all, Mike. Yeah. First, what I said mm -hmm. was it was my understanding right. that this would go back to being an EMT type operation with on call firemen that would respond from home for the ambulance. I was inferring to the two sh the shifts, the night shifts. Okay, you need to shift. clarify that because and when you speak to the general audience, it's perceived a little different. 
I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, you're pointing that out to me. I understand that. But the reality of it is the reason of having a dialogue is so everybody understands what's going on. It still rolls us back to the fact that we'll probably have EMTs in the station in the daytime. We won't have a paramedic license. And in the evening and at night, we'll have EMTs responding from home. That's my reading if the override doesn't pass. Is that correct? In terms of the value or the budget that's left, possibly. I don't know the <coughs> exact allocation of where the, the sure. shifts would be. But yeah, you would roll back to what we had a year ago or something similar. Could you take out a hundred? hundred thousand dollars. hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Right? Which is what we've just appropriated back in. So wherever we were eight months ago is where we would be. Yeah. And, and just speaking to that point, um, if we roll back to those levels that we had, um, the state, there's a very good chance that we could lose the paramedic level service. That doesn't mean that we won't have EMTs. So if I gave that impression, I apologize. Um, but even if we have paramedics on staff, they are not allowed to function as a paramedic, we would still have to wait for an ambulance from another community to function as a paramedic on our ambulance. Right, and that means that we don't get the ambulance receipts. Yeah. We have to have an intercept with another town, and which is them. dangerous. Yeah. And, th and can I just a delay. Can I just ask in the, um, in the scenario of the override, what that one person staffing the fire, is that a paramedic? Uh, yes, okay. it's a paramedic. And that's specifically to keep the paramedic license because they require the 24 seven with a paramedic there. Sure. And that's the minimal way to do it. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Mike, all due respect, your points are always taken. Your clarification. No problem. Uh, I'm, try I'm trying. I understand we're pushing for the override, but we need to be <coughs> detailed. We need to I'm be biased. unbiased when it comes to some of those. I think and it, it's everyone's, everyone's biased in some direction, but I think mm -hmm. sometimes we lean a little too much to push the override when we need it. Okay. To make, to make the assumption that we can keep a paramedic level service if we cut staffing, because there is some staffing cut, mm -hmm. um, is an assumption that you're making and I'm not because I deal with the state and, and getting the license each year. Okay. I was talking to Charlie, to be honest, just okay. about this yeah. discussion we had. I think then the underlying thing is we just got to be straight with the people on it so they'll know. Absolutely. And, and I think you both agree with that. So Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Janet Kane, 83 Glendale. So I kind of had a clarification question from the chief. Yeah, I want to make sure I understood you correctly. Right now we have the full time during the day. We have two on um, in the firehouse at night yep. for second shift and one plus on call Maybe on the third shift. Yep. That's what we have right now. Correct. What are we improving? for next year over that for the additional funds that we're asking for. What uh, more do we get, I guess, is what I'm trying yeah, to understand. The additional funds only fund it for the full year, where, where, where it was a lesser amount in 2018 is because yeah, we, I, we, I want to, the yeah, audience to understand. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a good question. Um, the lesser amount that we had in 2018 was um, only because it funded it for uh, different levels partially through the year. So it wasn't fully funding what we have now through the entire year, and the funding that's in place with the override would include the funding that we need for the entire year. So for fiscal 19, this is gonna be the first year we fully fund what was passed at town meeting? That's correct. Okay. Beth Russell Smith, 84 High Street. So the requirement to maintain the EMT, paramedic. the paramedic licensing mm -hmm. is one at night, two in uh, the day, uh, two in the morning? Yeah, 24 seven with paramedic. And that's yeah. what we have to do to maintain the licensing. Yeah. That's the so basis. just to follow up on her question, yep. what happens Chief, if we had one in the, on the second shift and one on the third shift with a, a call for that? Um, Is the, it, would it pass the muster for the state in general? Uh, possibly, that, and that's where we'll, if, if we don't get an override, um, we're gonna Tweak that. try everything we can. The challenge would be to find people who are available who are staying time. home and oh, not working yeah. that time. would be available for standby. Okay. So, Fair. I mean, we're going to try everything that we can to keep sure. it functioning. Okay, thanks. Matt, you want to? So, Matt Rowland, 16 Mountain Road, trying to follow the rules. Um, so, for 
override, I think that we've pounded this, it's like a dead horse at this point, but it needs to be level from fiscal year 18, and I'm, I'm with the chief on this. If, if we voted these, these things in and we only paid for them for half a year, then it needs to be the full funding for the level service for the override. Where, where I'm off a little bit here on some of these numbers, and it, um, I, could, I could nitpick here, but there are a lot of numbers that are outside of that um, that the override is higher than fiscal year 18, and it's just, it just comes back to how we have to sell this, right? And I mean, so you can just, you can just go down the line in this, in this public safety section, and you can see, I mean, you, even if you take out some of those partial year issues in the, in the fire department, I mean, you're, you're looking at six, seven, eight of them where, yeah, they're minor differences, two, three thousand dollars, but they add up and, and they add up to over 10 by my math. Um, it's just going to be hard to sell. I, I mean, you got some things in police that you can see, um, the fire things you should take out, but you got some building expenses, building inspector salary. I mean, you just, just go down it and look at it. It really needs to be on the 18 number, and with the exception of the level service mm -hmm. coming from the fire, in my opinion. Anything else from the general public? Finance committee? Select board? Thoughts? You wish to move on to the next section? Mm -hmm. I'm asking now because it doesn't seem to work when I just do it. In the first section, you voted the cons Who com agent, you? Dan Pellegrini, Crooked Ledge Road, member of the finance committee. Um, but we did that in the first section, so I, I would think it should be appropriate. Anything that was approved in that town meeting that wasn't in the budget at the start of the year, um, you guys voted on the last section to either include it in the uh, override or not. And I think there's definitely some items in there that we have some uh, debates or back and forth uh, between the committees, as well as from the budget. Well, let's see what the board wants to do. Yeah, I mean, we discussed this early on that, you know, we're getting 3000 here, 4000 here, and there's reasons behind it, but you're right, if we're going to do it, let's go back and we can say, here's what we did to everybody, boom. And, and I'm, I'm for that service. level of service, yeah. I agree with that part of it, although I do feel like there was an explanation given. I will say that based on what was voted on by the public at the town meeting. I take that as a bit of a referendum about what the town wants to do, and I do think that the town wants 24-7 paramedic service. I don't want to lose our license. This is uh, in the best interest of everybody in this town. Um, I was convinced by the building inspector's salary increases with over $100,000 brought in in 100% uh, increase in uh, money coming into the department, and so that was voted on. I know the money was taken from the uh, free cash, um, so I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, let, let me, I, let I me just back, have to make hold it hold on a sec. Let, me, let me back up. When I say level service, the fire department was voted at town meeting, the building inspector. To me, that's level service. So I'm not talking about going back prior to that vote. I'm talking about that vote forward. But the CONSCOM was also voted too at that, so why isn't that pulled but back? But I just don't want to support was. taking the fire in, in, in the building. But I'm not, talk I'm not talking just the fire, but 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 it's building. the same thing. So I, I would like, and I think you guys owe it to this town to vote on it so we see where you stand on it, and I appreciate Maureen's opinion, and, and you guys very much will, will vote unanimously on the fire. But you got to look at the building. That is the same exact scenario as the CONSCOM. And you took it in your, on your own to vote on the CONSCOM, but you won't vote on that one. The other comment is It's a yes. brand new position. So we're basically, uh, with CONSCOM, I see it, I see it differently. Uh, it's still an increase. And then, you know, the other thing is that we want to be clear, the reason why the funds and the fees are up is because we doubled them. It's not because building's up. If you look at where building is, we actually missed our target. Our target was 187,000. We came in at 127,000. So we're dramatically off in the building, but yet we're increasing those hours. So I'm just saying we need to be equitable across the board. And, and at least if that's the way you guys vote on it, then that's the way you vote on it because that's the positions that you're in. But I think we need to take a vote on it and we can't selectively vote on things that are increased. That's just my opinion.
Yeah, well, I think when you compare the conservation agent that was funded with a grant going to the second part, $10,000, comparing to an ambulance service or a fire service or a police service, it's a little bit different. I see it as the, the, the fire and police is more priority. I, that's just my view. Well, what I'd like to do is let Matt come up here and to give us his punch list because he's already got it on his laptop. Yeah, it's pretty clear when you just go down here. So, all right, so, so Matt Rowland, 16 Mountain Road. So just do it. Let's open it up for discussion here. Let's just do it line by line because because what we're talking about here is asking the citizens to vote in an override, right. which benefits literally every department in this town, and it's catastrophic if it doesn't pass. So we really need to be strategic about making sure that this passes, and I'm going to do everything I can to see that it does. But with that being said, when I'm having these discussions, and everybody else is in this room, we, we're going to be fielding questions, and they're going to be hard ones. And we want the scenario to be the best possible scenario. So. Just going down. I mean, we're, we're going to start right under the grade public safety line. Are you going the fiscal override budget? Yes, fiscal okay. override budget, because that's because that's my concern. Because yep. you guys are going to figure out the balanced budget. It's coming at you. I mean, you only have a certain amount of money to play with, yep. so figure out where the cuts are. But the override is what I want to sell here, and w you know, so we're just going to go down. So police department overtime is up three thousand um, dollars. You know, it, hopefully let's, this doesn't let's crucify me here. Let's but back up. Sorry to interrupt, but I, something that came up before and it, it slipped my mind. It's police incentive, and chief, you can tell. Uh, on the uh, Quinn bill, it's the same amount. I thought when we renegotiated the contract, it changed as new people came on board. The percentage went down. So shouldn't this be decreasing? No, it's the same percentage. Same percentage? Okay. So the new people coming out are getting the same percentage as people have been here 10 years? No, we have no new people that are on the That's a whole okay. issue. So this is stable because we have a stable workforce? Right. Okay, thanks. Sorry, Matt. Go ahead. No, it's, that's fine. Um, okay, so police department overtime is up $3,000, yep. 57000 versus 60000 Police department expenses are up 3000 So by my math, that's another 6000 in the override. Police equipment maintenance is up 3000 so now we're up to 9000 um, Going down the list further, I get a little dicey in this fire area because I want the override, this is personal opinion, but I think that the, this is what we're pushing here. I want the override to be level service on the fire because that's what was voted in and that's the service that we have today. And on a balanced budget scenario, it, it's a clear loss. So. I, I think that the override should include whatever the level service was, just trued up for an annual basis. So I'm going to scale down a little bit through those, but you know, one of the items that I don't that I don't think should be included in that service number is fire department building expenses are up just shy of six thousand dollars. I mean, now we're up to fifteen thousand dollars by by my simple math here. Um, you know, so now then you kind of. Scale down a little bit further. EMT is in the fire area. Um, the building inspector's salary. I, I mean, that that I just have a general public question on that. I'm just not sure. I mean, he still has a salary at 18 of $53,000, um, which means the service is still there at $53,000. So. If you still can provide the service for $53,000 and we're looking for level service in an override budget and nobody else is getting an increase in pay with 2% or cost of living increase, like this is, this is going to be a struggle next year. I just don't see that. We can I can answer tell you with the building inspector. I'm, I'm just commenting. I'm sure that there's history that I'm unaware of, but, but I, but yeah. I want to, I, I mean, it's just something that's glaring that but let him a person in the public. Address it so, so that way we'll have it on record. Go ahead. Yeah. Basically, what it came down to is we need to have a competent individual that's getting paid for the hours he's putting in. It became apparent to us that he was putting in more hours than he was being compensated for. So the feeling was to try to adjust his salary so we would keep him. Because the other side to this whole equation is to keep competent people, you have to pay them. Sure. And the fear was if we lost a competent employee, it would probably cost us more in the long term trying to replace that individual. So this is level service, paying him for the service okay. that he provided. Okay. Again, just, 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 com just comments here. Um, so, and that's it, right? I mean, but, 
leaving that out, um, John or anyone, leaving that out, I just I just found 15 grand. Uh, assuming that you that you that you argue or dispute uh, the building inspector salary, so right? I mean, so on the override. So you're and just to overdo it quick. Police department overtime three thousand dollars. Police department expenses three thousand dollars. Police department expense uh, maintenance three thousand dollars. Fire department building expense six thousand dollars. Correct. That's the level of service. Yeah. That's 15 grand. I just want to be very, very, very clear. It's not picking on these departments. It's me. I want to do everything I can I'm to pass this. That That's all I want to do. And like, you just, but you can't sell a that. Nice, rational approach to this. And enjoying that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just, you can't sell 15 grand extra. It's overage. It's, 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 it's a want, not a, not a need. That's. I mean, I, I hate but to say it. It pains me to say it, but seriously. Do I hear a motion? To change those budget items. I'm letting them do a motion, so they have to decide what they want to do. I'm just opening so it up that way. I shut the podium down, and I let them. So let, let me make a motion so we get to the discussion phase. How's that? So I'll make the motion that we decrease the police overtime by three, the police expense by three, the police equipment maintenance by three. And the fire department billing expenses by five thousand eight hundred thirty-three dollars and thirty-one cents to achieve what we just talked about with Matt. I'll second that for discussion. Okay. So I, I'd like to hear the the chiefs. Yes. Myself. Could I hear the fire chief or and police chief? Yeah, both chiefs? And chief, chief. Yes. Uh, first up, I, I appreciate very much the support. Um, City speech for the fire department. Uh, as we looked at building expenses, uh, we considered that part of the level funding only because in the past we didn't have people at the station with lights on, heat on, uh, in the same capacity as we do now. Um, and, and that's where some of the additional expense comes in. Um, fire department budgets, uh, we, we don't have maintenance for anything. I mean, it really is bare bones prior. Um, the additional monies was put in uh, to fund the building as we put in the trailer there's some additional costs associated um, not major it's you know certainly every dime counts and I, I get that um, but this was a minimal extra amount to pay for the extra time that people are there using utilities and so that's where it comes from thanks yeah certainly happy to answer please chief please Mike Wyatt, police chief. Um, well, I did explain the, the 3000 on the expenses uh, already. Uh, maintenance went up only, the maintenance contracts, um, that is to give room for some of the um, contracts that uh, will go up for our, you know, Wemleck radios. Um, I have, uh, I'm paying out the copier costs. Um, and the rest of the yearly contracts. I have no control over those prices. Those are the things we pay yearly, and we're kind of at the mercy of the, the vendor of uh, the contract. They, they usually try to stay within budget of uh, what the years past were, but sometimes they, they, have, uh, they go up. Um, the overtime, um, like I said, overtime is guesstimated because we, and we usually try to do it from the past year. And uh, like I said, this year we've, we have spent uh, quite a bit in overtime, um, not as much as last year, uh, but you know, it's more than what was budgeted for. However, it's within the wages and uh, we, we've never gone above and beyond the actual wages. Mm -hmm. Is there another? Another item, expenses, equipment maintenance. Overtime expenses and equipment maintenance, right. that was it. You know, the regional lockup is part of our, you know, um, contracts and that, they've been great. They've stayed at the 5,502 yeah, for years. So, we're not looking at that, yeah. right. All right, so 
Thank you, Chief. Anything else? No. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Do you want to break this up into police department, fire department? Do you want to break this up into... Uh, I don't want to pit one against the other. We either do it or we don't do it, you know. But I also just want to mention that when, when back on general government, there were other things that increased. We had uh, town clerk expenses went up. I mean, so it's not apples and apples. I mean, um, we're doing this now on this section, but we didn't do it on the first section. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention that there's town clerk expenses, there are ass assessor expenses that went up. So I'm assuming that these ex uh, increases are contracts or you know other things. I can't be sure, but um, I just wanted to mention that that it's, it's not it's not what's been done in the past. Well, we did cut on the first section, but mm. not all, not every yeah, single item. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing right. is, if we cut the fire right. department building expenses, so in year in month ten, what does he wipe out? So mm. if how does he handle it? I mean, that's a pretty forecasted item. I mean, I, I know it's increased, and we have increased uh, staff there, so what, how are we gonna handle that? Not the way we want to, for sure, but I mean, it's like, it's a valid well, question. strange when, I mean. Whatever. Well, it's a valid question on all of these, you know, why the some, not the other. The, the idea behind it, I think, is to make the package palatable to everybody, and if they can point out, well, this one went up, why'd you do that, why not? If we create much of a, a buzz in confusion or just questions, right. we're gonna get a no, yeah. gonna get a no vote, yeah. you know? So, I mean, I think, I, I would hate to do it, but I, I, I would vote for doing that just so that we can show the town how serious we are and list it in the issues over here on the uh, Southampton budget uh, scenarios. I'm going to sit quiet on this one. Uh, <laughs> he sort of talked himself out at the beginning. It's not good either way, let's face it, you know. All right, you have a motion. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it at that point in time. Um, just a comment, I guess. Um, Vicki Morrow, I was getting there. Pomeroy Meadow Road, town accountant. Um, you know, we asked people for level services budget. And the override budget was anticipated as a level service budget, not a level funded budget. There's two separate pieces. So if, and I'm just gonna use the building for the fire department as an example. The level service is really with that extra money in it. If you wanted level funded, then we should have asked for level funded. Well, we asked for level service. So he needs that, I'm not saying that you should or you shouldn't, but the level service for him is, the lights are gonna be on extra. That's a level service because he, you know, yeah, I guess I'm not quite sure if I make my point. I don't think we, we disagree with you. No, I know, I'm just saying like that. So there's a difference between the two. Just I'm not saying we shouldn't cut these or we should cut them, but it's, you know, we asked for level service and so you're going back to level funded and there's a difference. Yeah. I, I, I think we're gonna have to bite the bullet harder than we want on all I, of them. I'm sure we, we are. It's the nature of the game, yeah. so. We have a motion on the table that's been seconded. Mm -hmm. All in favor of cutting these items in the budget? I'm gonna vote yay. I think we need to take a tough stand. I just worry about what's going to come down nine to ten months from now. That's well, my that's concern. What me. Yeah. What's going to come down nine to ten, ten months from now when we don't have a fire department, we don't have a police, we don't, you know, you, the core is still there and the chiefs will have to work within that to cut this money, but at least we, if we can keep the core, we don't lay off any, any personnel. That's my thought. I may be an island again here, but you know. <laughs> voted with you, John, okay. but because it's two against two. We well, we don't know that yet. I haven't voted yet. Yeah, I just need someone to explain to me why we are cutting these expenses from these two departments, and yet on general government, there are increases. Maybe we should go back to that section. I would just feel like that would be the uh, responsible thing to do. If we promise to go back, mm -hmm. does that help you at all, either way? I mean, you know, I, I think it's fair. Yeah. I, I don't think that we should be increasing certain departments. If we're going to say that this is the rule, then this needs to be the rule across the board. 
so long as we have the service and how that's going to be handled when uh, the fire department is on site and there's no lights will be another question. Yeah, but we're talking about level service, not level funding. Mm -hmm. That's what's required to keep the service the same. That's why I voted nay. Yeah. I, I think the department managers are good managers. They're good with budgets. They're, this isn't a good thing, but I think they'll work it out. And they'll have a full department staff and they'll mm -hmm. figure out ways to do this through the year. Mm -hmm. Again, the goal is to pass it. Right now, though, passing it would not give them that additional, correct? Right, but if we if we don't pass it and they have to cut staffing, mm -hmm. is that better than saying oh, yeah. to the fire department, you got to cut 12,000 or the police chief 9,000? I don't think so. Again, that's my opinion. I, I want to have a good base for the departments mm -hmm. and let them work with the small numbers later, you know? Okay. All right, I vote in favor so long as we're across the board with the first department and not having increases in expenses in other departments. So you're in favor of cutting this? Yep. So it's three to one? Yep. Okay. So we're done with public safety. Does the board wish to make a motion to go back to the first general well, government? I'd like to just keep going forward till we're done, then flip it back again. So we got a process, part? So, so Charlie, just to be, John, just to be clear, we're talking about 333 three, three up at the police. Yep. And we're Six, talking about the uh, $5,833.31, I believe, to the fire. Yeah, that's oh, that's what you just voted. Okay. Yeah. There really are only three expenses on the first page that went up. So you want to go back then? Yeah. I mean, Charlie, it's up to you. Okay. No, you make it's a up motion to, the to go board. back. Okay. Do you need a motion to go back? I would like a motion. Okay. I'll have a motion that we just go back to general government for a minute and review the expense lines. Okay, I'll second it. Discussion. You hear that, Jim? Okay, so I'll make a, I'll make a motion. We already did it. Huh? We already. Quiet, we're go please. Back. We voted to go back. We voted to go back to general government. I second it. So three of these have increased. One of them is assessor's expense. Hey guys, can we? Sorry, but we can't Expense. I actually used that, and it worked. <laughs> Go ahead. Assessors and town clerk expense uh, increased. Mm -hmm. And then I don't, I'm not sure about election registration. That's a pretty big increase and I'm not sure why. But I think it was mentioned when we went over this that it had to do with yep. we anticipate more elections than we had. Yes, there are more elections scheduled for during fiscal year 19 than there were in 18. So then maybe town clerk and assessor then should be level serviced. I'll make a motion to change those to level service. Which ones? Uh, assessor expense and town clerk expense. <coughs> assessor expense is $4,200, which is basically what it was in fiscal 18. Well, it's basically a little, I just saying I want it to be the same if we're asking other departments to do that. So $13? Yep. And the other one is town clerk, a uh, thousand. Town clerk, why can't I find that? Oh, there it is. You want town clerk to be a thousand? Well, I mean, we're basically increasing an expense line on certain departments and not in others, and I didn't you get an take explanation. Yeah, take for that. I didn't get an explanation oh. as to why that should be in the fire and police shouldn't be. Okay, so you want to reduce town clerk expenses by to where it 500. was level. Okay. So you want that at 500. Huh. Yeah. You want the assessors drop by thirteen dollars. <laughs> we'll have it be basically what it was. I'm, yep. I'm just asking a question. I'm not looking for. Well, you're minimizing it by saying only thirteen dollars. All right, you, you're bouncing it. Over to you. I'm just saying, leave it where it is. Matt, now you're talking out of turn. Just a point of clarification, um, Vicki Morrow, town accountant. The assessor expenses, what they asked for in eighteen or in nineteen, is actually seven thousand dollars less than they than they got in eighteen. So. The assessors. 
So they're they're down seven thousand dollars in nineteen from what they had in eighteen. But not with the approval. Correct. Just what they just what they asked yeah. for level service. It's seven thousand dollars less. Mm -hmm. Is that expenses or salary? That's the entire thing. Well, they also are changing some total. personnel. Are they not? Correct. So they they there's there was two people in there, and they eliminated one, and so that saves some of that money, mm -hmm. and they moved it around to those other buckets. But in total, they're down seven thousand and nineteen bucks or something like that. So. But I'm just yeah I'm just making a point that you guys did lower yours from third seven green from make last that year. Motion? I made that motion. Yeah, I second the motion. So the motion was to levels uh, to reduce service the assessors and the town clerk similar to police and fire. I really want a motion that has a dollar amount in. Okay, it. a thousand town a thousand town clerk and uh, assessors would be column one. Four one eight seven. Wouldn't town clerk be five hundred dollars? No, it's no, going it from down five hundred. She's saying this. Oh. Make it a thousand. The dollar amount less would be one thousand, or the overriding expense. So the dollar amount will be a thousand. Yeah. Right. And I, so the dollar amount on the assessors is going to be four one eight seven. Four one eight seven. I'm doing this because the clerk that's doing the minutes has to have accurate minutes. No, that's fine. Yep. Yep. So we have a vote. Roll for that. So hang on now. Okay. I'm trying to yep. herd cats. Write it down. Here. Write it down. <laughs> All right. So we got a motion and a second. Yeah. And that doesn't take care of everything, but we got the motion and a second, so let's get rid of these. Do you want me to allow the public to speak on this? Not on these two, so. no. It's fine. We, I think we should there's just more. There's them. more. Well, that's what I said. There's more, but we got a motion and a second. Motion and a second on this already. Okay. All in favor of this? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's unanimous. Did the clerk get that? Aye. Got it. All right. So the, okay. So I'm going to chime in here. We, I want to go down each line item because there are some other items in there. Uh, for instance, the photocopier lease and supplies. That's contract. She said that. Alan's contract, right, Becky? Yes, it's that exact amount, or are you just buffering? Uh, well, it, part of it is dependent on how many copies you make. So a click charge in addition to the base rate. So what did we use year to date, or what, I mean? Year to date. I'm, <laughs> yeah. So that if that's if that's a loose number, then it's got to go. Yeah. Yeah, go. do more electronically if possible, yeah. Did you see the amount of paper we have in front of us? Well, I don't, I, I personally, when we have the agendas and everything, I do it electronically, yeah. So maybe that's what we need to do as a board, say we want it electronically. I wanted to do that, but it's changing so fast, I couldn't get a slide that I could. Because you'll be short this year. Yeah. We still have a number of other departments, so well, we're going to Everybody's going to be short. Well, we gotta. We want to go down all these line items because we don't want to go back again. Let's just take a quick look. We the accounting software is that the same issue? Is that an exact cost with the? So we're hedging. Yeah. We have software support goes up 485 again. Is that? Pardon? That's that's actual? Okay. The town maps, uh, how critical is that to have? It's critical. It is critical? Yeah. Are we violating any law, rule, regulation? But why the increase? Why is it going from 2 to 4? I'm just curious. So we went through that about because an hour and a half ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Long time ago. Because they had <laughs> decreased it for at the annual town meeting because half of the yeah. monies hadn't been okay. expended. Francine, T Francine Tishman, Finance Committee 83 Glendale Road. If you just look at the administrative assistant for the assessor's office, it was 26,000, it went down to 10. So if we're doing it, you're gonna do it both ways. That puts 16,000 back in, or it allows them the difference to use the $16,000 for the other purposes that they intended. Yeah. I don't know if that's valid, though, you know, <laughs> to be honest with you, if you cut in one way, I know we said debit and credit last week, but. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's very clear. I mean, you're cutting, it essentially cutting in twice. 
Yeah, but the reason the, the cut is to cut, not to add somewhere else. But no, yeah. Yeah, I, I hear you too, and it's a tough one, yeah. So you see anything in there, Rini? No, you? I don't. Okay. I think we've already gone through it. I don't see anything else in there. That okay. Is there any motion that's open here that, okay, okay, good. <laughs> so the question is this. We've been at this now for another two hours. Do you wish to take a five-minute break and start again? Keep going. Keep going. I need a break. Um, um, unless there's pizza coming, let's just keep going. <laughs> hey, Charlie, I'm going to disappear for a while. And that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. You know, I'm going to call a five-minute recess. For us older generations.
All right, we're calling the selectmen's meeting together again. It's uh, March 27th. It is now 9 o'clock. Uh, I'm going to take out of the uh, order the schedule here because of a request by the librarians. So I need to find where they are. Oh, they're right here. Uh, culture and recreation. Yep. So let's jump the culture and recreation. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> I've lost my whole train of thought. Okay, Mike, you ready? Yes, we're on. So we did review and go over um, the culture and recreation line. I, to be honest, I'd like to defer to the library because I think they have, you know, bigger issues than just the, you know, the budgeting line by line. I think they'd probably speak better to it than we would, so I would defer to them. That's um, if we have questions, we'll obviously come up. But. Please. Barbara Golden, um, librarian. Okay, the problem is the accreditation issue. So the municipal appropriation requirement in order to get accreditation is $153,603. The way the budget is now, the one that, you know, if the override doesn't pass, it's 140409 I don't even think they'd give us a waiver with that because it's such a big reduction and also um, in order to get a waiver, you have to have a proportion, every um, department has to be proportionately cut. And the library in this case is cut 13%, which is a lot compared to the others. So I don't, even if uh, we applied for waiver, I really don't think we would get it for that reason. So um, you could take us down from what we asked from to $153,603 and we, we wouldn't even have to apply for, for a waiver for that. And that would be a reduction of $7,127. But this reduction is $13,194 more than that. So uh, it's a question of the state accreditation. So 153K is the accreditation? One, you have to be exact, 153603. And with a loss of accreditation, that means that any person living in Southampton cannot borrow from any other library. But you couldn't, that, that's how it affects people. That it affects people. We wouldn't get interlibrary loan. And if you have a Southampton card, they wouldn't accept it in Northampton. Or so You're basically banned. <laughs> but it doesn't hurt our library per se. It's, yeah, the, because it's we, out of. Well, we, we, I don't even know if we could use the system. Right. I would have to check on that. But I know that nobody could get a book from another library. And okay. we get a lot of books from other libraries. It gets delivered by a little bus. And we get it three times a week. And it's a lot, 8,000. So people wouldn't be able to get anything. Nothing, yeah. So Barbara, we need to increase this by 11,000? It's um, 13,194 would give us the exact dollar to the MR, MAR, Municipal Appropriation Requirement, which would be 153603 So it would still be a reduction of $7,127. We just did a reduction on a number of other departments. <coughs> yeah. Do you want to vote to increase this? Is this, this is um, all the items uh, added up together? Yeah, the the uh, the whole total is not just the library. So I the just um, sure, yeah. did the library, okay. which is uh, 140,409 as it yeah. stands now. The uh, the override budget figures are fine. You know, those are fine. Excuse me. Thank you. But I'm afraid we would uh, people would not be happy with not being able to use their card in other libraries or get books from other libraries. So 10994. I mean, I'm looking at the total budget for. Well, you, you don't count the oh, park sorry, historical sorry, sorry. Memorial Day. I yep, yep, yep. I know it's. A, I got confused too. You should see my paper. It's all <laughs> figures all over it. So where would this thirteen thousand one hundred fifteen dollars increase go? What line item? Yeah. Well, payroll. <clears throat> I, we're, I'm okay with uh, utilities and maintenance are running a little bit lower because of the upgrade to the HVAC. I heard about that. Top line there, Charlie. Oh, yeah. Yes, there's nothing but the best for that, huh? We're happy with the upgrade. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I, I'm going to ask the question nobody wants to ask is, so if we don't put that money back in there, our library is there, but we just can't get books from other libraries. So that's a negative, mm -hmm. but... 
I'm not even sure they, we could use the CWMR system. I would have to check right. on that. So we'd be self-contained, if you will. Right. Our what you have in the library that, is yeah. all you have. Yeah. I just look at 13000 being a dollar amount. That also, all of our e-books, everything's yeah. through CWMR. Right. Shut down and we'd be Yeah, all the electronic library. stuff is through right. CWMR. Okay. Yeah. Just, I don't know how people feel about that, but I wanted to bring it up. Okay, Barbara. Any other thank questions? You. Nope, thank well, you. I'm sure there will be. Stand by. <laughs> So my only question um, would be where the funds go, and it was just mentioned that they were going wages, and it's 14000 Oh, I actually had something on wages, too. Um, we're open six hours on Monday and not five, and I figured it out, and it would have been 10000 not 18000 just to clarify. You know, the cut here was um, 18000 in payroll, and it really, when you figure it out exactly, it's 10,000 something. So I don't know where the other 8,000 came from. That was me. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah. My, my, my understanding is, is we need to allocate $13,115. 194. 194. 13,194. Okay. Between the 14409 and the 15360. Two wages. So you would put that in wages, okay. Uh, well, I don't know if we're going to, but that's what they're asking. And just uh, for conversation, we just pulled out 15000 from mm -hmm. public safety. Mm -hmm. still down to yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's, that's a tough one. All right. Okay, the motion. Oh, what, you know what? I'm sorry. Is anybody from the general public want to talk? Okay. <laughs> Should never have opened that door. <laughs> this way I don't have to talk when I go home. My kids won't tell me to be quiet. So Vicki Morrow, Pomeroy Meadow Road. One of the pieces of the library, too, it also feeds into part of the um, indirect costs for the school. So there's a bunch of components that get filed with Schedule 19, which belongs to the indirect costs for the, mm -hmm. for, this, for the school district. And part of that is the programming and the books and stuff that the children use at um, – the library and so that would decrease probably not a lot but it would decrease you know a couple thousand dollars five or six thousand dollars to the indirect cost for the school so just that won't probably make or break it but it just affects that also so the library school not being accredited as well no no it's just that the 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 um the library at the school is a good little library but the library in town has way more programming way more books that the children at the school use so the Department of Education, and in the summer, the Department of Education wants to know how much is your library influencing the kids that go to your school. And so that's what that component is. I just want to ensure the little bus stop up there as well when it comes down here. No, nope. no, nope. bookmobile. All right. Any comments from any finance committee members or anyone before I move it to does this board wish to entertain a motion <coughs> to increase this budget by $13,194 into wages? I'll make that motion. I think it makes sense. I need a motion. I'll make a motion to increase the library wage uh, line item by $13,194. A second. Discussion? I think we talked uh, about. I mean, I love the library, but I think we're looking at how to cut. And by adding this to the column, what happens if the override doesn't pass, I think adds something for the people to look at and say, I want that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no. I have uh, two comments. One is I'm just not sure why the library director and the Council of Aging director don't have a separate line item when the other directors do. That's just a process question I wanted to ask. It would be helpful to have that um, <coughs> specified. And we talked about net school spending as a minimum. We talked about licensing the fire department as a minimum. I think we should focus on accrediting our library. Um, just historical reference in terms of separating director from wage lines. So there was a push to do that three or four years ago. I know we did in certain departments, other departments there was pushback to not do that. I can't speak for exactly why the library or the Council on Aging does, but we, 
we made a push to do do that break those out some were broken out some were not so. yeah I just think it clouds the issue especially when you know there's mixed money coming for director position I just think that it makes it more transparent I think we have a motion on the table relative to the vote for right amount, not the discussion mm -hmm. right and line item breakouts right and that's the discussion on that motion we made and you mentioned that we cut 3,000 here, 3,000 there, but you're in the override section. This is the non-override section. Yeah. So we didn't cut any money for that. You're right, okay. Just bringing it up. Yeah, good point on that. All in favor? Aye. aye. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say aye. Can I, in, can I, take, can I take two minutes to bring something up? Sure. Yeah, it kind of, kind of reflects why I, vo uh, why I voted that way. I'd like to get finance. The clerk get the vote. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to get the finance and the select board and the public's pulse on this. And tell me if I'm wrong, Ed. I'm going back to the Southampton 2019 budget scenarios. So if you go to that sheet, if the override doesn't pass, we add the first paragraph, if you will, of items taken away, and then we add the additional municipal cuts required to go to no override budget. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, okay. If the override doesn't pass, this is the sheet I'm looking at, you know. Yeah. This column up here is already in the budget. This is what will be cut if the override doesn't pass. Mm -hmm. So so from my, my opinion, we put this out to the people and they say, if you don't pass the override budget, this is what you're going to lose. And going down here, as the average citizen, you're going to lose a conservation agent. Yeah, okay. Reduction of police overtime, two grand. So what? They'll make it up. You know, reduction of legal expenses, five thousand. So there's not much meat in here until you get down to EMD expenses, ambulance, municipal reduction of workforce, three employees. And most people might say, "Okay, you lose three employees." I don't think that, and that's why the library part. I said that we need to add meat in there so people say, "God, I don't want to lose these services." But I don't, and I want opinions. I don't think there's a whole lot in here except for the fire that people are going to look at and say, you know, I'm okay with it. So I want to get opinions, finance committee and select board. Do you agree or am I? What's not shown here is the detail of the school that's going to happen as well, right? There you go. So that yeah. has to be put in here. That's right. That's in two. Which was unknown prior to the most recent revision, right? right? Until we had the actual number, the full impact was unknown. I, they'll speak to it. When it gets to that point, but there is a, there is an impact that will um, add greatly to this. Um, from a personal perspective, I agree with you, John. That if and we talked about this when we started the conversation about the override was, it's a cross the board multi departmental issue that needs to be fixed, mm -hmm. and you know we we talked about making sure that each department has skin in the game, for lack of a better term, and you know no one. You know, wants to be the one that chooses to eliminate a department or eliminate a position, but we have to be careful when we choose to prop others up and reduce others because it may seem, yeah. you know, a little biased or maybe we're not looking at the whole picture. In, you know, not saying that the library staying or going sways an override vote, but it, it may sway a certain portion of the voters of, well, I use the vote, I use the library primarily, so I'm okay, you know, right? And I, yeah. I think it is important that we look at each department, because if each, each department's going to take drastic cuts, then that's what needs to be portrayed. We did discuss it in our finance team meetings of the reduction, the non-override reduction to the library would decimate it and they would lose accreditation. Right. That was something discussed similar to a loss of a FTE in the highway or the police or the four or five or six at the school. You know, those were all discussed. So I'm, I know it's been voted, but I agree that we should have shown what would have happened if, you know, without that. So. Yeah, because even in the police department, people may say, oh, it's one police officer. Okay, we can do without it. You know, it, we've got to pick all these groups, the library has a lot of support. So if they're seeing they're going to lose all that, you may get those 10 or 20 votes. The school see they're going to lose six you know, teachers, or we'll get those 200 votes. I mean, we need to take all these votes and put them together. Well, the loss of this amount of money, 7,000, and we, we could, would close on Monday. 
But to some people, well, okay, fine, Monday. I mean, you well, know I'm, what I'm, I'm saying. I'm talking about the supporters of the library that you were talking about. Right, we wouldn't but like we that. need some of the other people too. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I just we're going through a lot of effort, and if we don't have enough meat to this, you know, we're going to look back and say, what did we do wrong? And you know, some of these questions I don't like to ask, but I think we got to ask them and, and look at them. You know, you know, I mean, all of the departments deserve money, but how are we going to get that? But soapbox goes back to you. All right, uh, because we're in recreation and everything else, is there any changes anybody wants to make relative to the Park Commission, the Historic Commission, or Memorial Day? They don't look, they look staggered. Um, I know I talked about this before, the street lighting. I keep bringing it up. Everybody's going with LEDs, a lot less money. Do we pay so much for light? Do we actually pay an electric bill for light? You pay a municipal charge, um, Michael Rosenberg, 144 East Street, uh, Finance Committee. You pay a mis municipal charge per light of, it, it's either 8 to $12 a light per month. It depends on the fixture, the bracket, the, you know, the daylight sensor that's on there. LEDs are not offered. Um, it's not something no. we're offered. The towns that have LEDs have purchased the lights, right. installed them themselves, maintained them themselves. It's not something we could entertain taking on as a town right now, um, but yeah, I, you know, you can do a lamping study and look at the streets and see which ones could or could not shut some off. I mean, I have one on my street I like to shut off just because it comes in the window. Um, but in but in general, you you know, you kind of have to. Sounds weird, but drive around at night, see where the issues are, see if you'd like to shut lights off. But then you also get the opposition of lights being off in certain neighborhoods. So. Now the ones on Route uh, 10, we don't pay for those, do we? Those are state. Yeah. Um, there may be some that are, yeah. yeah. And then any um, flood lights are usually private customer paid, so. Okay. All right, are we ready to move on to the next education? Um, similar to the library, I'm going to defer to the school department for this. Um, if we have comments or questions, I'm sure we'll, we'll stand up, but the library is the most well-versed, I'm sorry, the school department is most well-versed in the subject, um, and I think there will be some other possible changes for transportation as well. So that will be possible savings there. So I will defer to them. Thank you. Okay, so um, Margaret Larson, uh, Nine David, and I'm on the school committee for Hampshire Regional. Um, so last week I talked way too much, um, so I'm going to give the Cliff Notes version specifically about the tuition um, for, um, I'm sorry, the um, transportation funds. So uh, we have a student coming to the regional who will require transportation daily, and one of the ways we can deal with that is by using a van pool, which is ex very expensive, or we can hire a van driver to drive one of our existing vans. If we do that, um, the principal, um, who is sitting back there, um, has figured out a route that we could take the student who goes to Westfield Vocational um, as part of the route or picking up this other student. If we do that, um, right now it appears as if that's about a $20,000 charge that was added um, for that student and there would be a charge back to the district from Hampshire Regional which would be about $7,000 so that could conceivably be a savings of about 13000 Did everybody get that? Is that clear? Um, there would also be a corresponding change to the Norris um, school budget of probably, what did we say, Kristen? 9,000? About a reduction of 9,000 because we can also transport, a, oh, sorry, Kristen. We can, we can also transport a, a Norris student to um, a school in Holyoke as well. So that could, off of their budget, be um, an additional 9,000. That's local school transportation, is that right? Um, correct. 
that's 9,000 on top of what I talked to Bobby about today. Because Bobby, Bobby already know all this. Bobby knows. So that's. Um, so I asked her what the number would be, and she took it down to. That was the 29,000? Yes. It was 203, I, and then she had 6,000 for a. Um, so maybe property. that's what that is. So that's the 209 that goes in now. That's probably, that's okay. what that is. I just okay. Sure that okay. There was something that. This wasn't mm -hmm. going to decrease anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it would for the um, vocational transportation. So that, I don't think she included that. I Did didn't, Bobby? I didn't ask. Right. That. Okay. So the figures here are just $9,000 less. It would the be. The 20s are already included in the law. The vocational transportation would be about $13,000 less. Okay. Right. And the 9000 is already included, you Apparently, said? that's already included. Right. So we have to just yeah. So strike that. Uh, follow up on the Westfield Vogue student. Actually, we have more than one going to Westfield Vogue, and we don't know who's coming in on April 1st. So my question on that $13,000 would be, is that just for the one? Or if we end up with two or three, can they be transported also? So. Okay. Hi, Kristen Smitty, Hampshire Regional Principal. We are not sure about who is going to be enrolling in Smith Vocational, and depending on what shop a student chooses, so right now, Smith Vocational does not offer aviation, which is why some students elect to go to Westfield Tech and get transportation charged back from the town. So the way that Vanpool works, or the contracted services, is that they charge per ride per student. So even if students live next door to each other, they would charge us for Vanpool would charge for two students being transported to Westfield Tech, whereas if um, the Hampshire Regional van picked students up, it would just be the hourly rate for that van driver, so about $15 an hour. So there wouldn't be a price difference if it was one or five students, because um, I anticipate it would take about an hour to transport from Southampton to Westfield Tech. But you would have the capacity to do more than just one. one Correct. Master. So the, a van, a, a student van can hold eight students. So if it was more than eight, that would be problematic. Okay. So do the students meet at a central place for pickup, or does the van driver go around to houses? So currently it's door-to-door um, -to -door service, because that's what van pool typically provides. Um, if there were more than one, we would <clears throat> work something out with the families. Because Smith folk, don't they meet at Norris or something? Um, there's different sites around. We get picked up in front of our home. Really? Yeah. Okay. And then so all the Hampshire buses. Tamara Lunas, 298 College Highway. Right now, all of the Hampshire Regional buses go around and pick up all the students. There is one bus that is dedicated for Smith Folk, and they go around, and that's the one bus that stays at Norris, and all the other buses drop off there. That one bus is full. That's why there's and they go there waiting. Yes, and they go straight to Would Smith. Be the same thing for this if they go in the Westfield Tech. The buses, pi buses pick them up and drop them off at Norris, save you anything? I think it would be the same. the same amount of money. Okay. And they, they get to ex be exposed to different programs in Westfield, and then if they get into one that's different from <clears throat> Smith, then we pay for them to go be transported to Westfield, right? So if they're accepted into a shop that Smith Folk does not offer, then the town is responsible for providing transportation. But they can elect to go to Westfield Tech. And, but if Smith Volk offers the same program, then transportation does not need to be provided. But I mean, it's not, what she's referring to, I think, Sorry, is yeah. uh, what the gentleman that has a child going there is. They go through a rotation, and then if they're accepted into, say, the aviation, mm -hmm. then we have to pay. But in the meantime, do we have to pay? I think during them? the trial period, because he's declared that that is his preference, then we Correct. do have to pay. But if That's they don't get accepted, I'm sorry, don't get accepted into aviation, we don't have to pay then. Correct. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Thanks. Similar to the one uh, Dan Pellegrini Finance Committee. I think it's a wonderful idea. The only thing I would caution is we got to look at the total cost of ownership, and if we put that much stress in the vans, you got to increase that expense line item a little bit, I would think, from maintenance of the vans, gas, operating. But I think it's a great idea. Well, it's a contracted service, right? No, no we own the van. We we, 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 we own the van. And I thought it was a van pool that we hired. No, we, it's no, so, so, so we own the van. We're hiring a driver, is the way I understood it. But all I'm saying is now that van will be on the road all day opposed to sitting in the parking lot. Just one shot back and forth, right? But I heard Holyoke, I heard others, and... Oh, Neary School But, but I think it's a great idea. I'm just saying let's not be ignorant to that there's going to be increased maintenance costs and, and gas costs. So let me ask you a question on, on, on the van. If the school day starts at 8 there and ends at 2, 
do we just drop them off at eight and pick them up at two or do we have to go back and forth back and forth we have to go back and forth really so there are other routes in between which is how we're um, providing the solutions back to north and but if a student says i get out at noontime we've got to go pick that student up at noontime mm -hmm. not the end of the school day hmm. i'm sorry i don't understand your question. well for instance uh, if we have somebody up at hampshire regional that has two uh, study classes is on the bus after noontime, you're not sending a special bus to send them home. You're, they're waiting in the study class. Correct. It doesn't happen that, that way at the Vogue? Well, at the Vogue school has like a half day, but... Oh, no, but I'm just saying if the program is just in the morning and they want to come home at noontime because they don't have anything in the afternoon, we have to send the special trip there? should be a full day of you know? school, I would imagine, right? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they don't so have academic and, <coughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. vocational periods. Well. All schools have a required time on learning. Okay, so it's one trip there and one trip back. Right. Gotcha. Thanks. Vicki, is the $20,000 an increase in vocational tech, uh, is that vocational tuition, is that real numbers or is that caution? Tuition? Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. transportation? No, the $20,000, the 62 to 82? Yeah, well, currently the 62,994 for 18 is not going to be enough to cover this year's budget. We're going to be short about sixteen or $17,000 because of that extra student from Westfield Vogue that we have hired the van pool for. And like Kristen said, it's, you know, per route, per day, per kid, and it's 275 bucks a day, I think, or something like that. So we're going to be short for 18. Not having this information, the 19 was based on that all this, the, the players would stay the same and we'd still need that van pool for next year. Okay. So. But you're projecting a decrease in tuition? The decrease, that came from the school business manager. It's an anticipated number of kids that will enroll based on what they anticipate the, what the state's going to set the, the um, what the state's going to set the uh, vocation tuition rate at. So we know we have three kids that are at, at Westfield Vogue. We can project that number out, but it's a Smith Vogue number that they don't necessarily have to tell them whether they're there or not till April. And so this was based on the projection that I got from the school business manager. Randall Kemp, Highway Superintendent. Would the van driver be a part-time position? No, it would be a full-time position. A brand new position? Or an, an hourly position. How many hours a week? So there's a number of different routes and scenarios based on where students are. You need to get to the microphone where I'm going right. to get phone calls. <laughs> so there are a number of different scenarios based on if we have one van driver or if we contract out for van pool. When the van driver is not doing a van route, then they stay. So for example, we have a number of students who are in our autism program that work at Big Y with a job coach. So right now we are able to take advantage of our services by having the van driver also be a job coach. So in that, um, the van driver gets a, a hourly salary of about $15 an hour, which is less than our hourly para rate or job coach rate. So we have the van driver assigned as a job coach in the time that they're not driving. The only reason I ask is I'm going to have an employee, presumably, that's going to be looking for 20 hours a week, who's already a town employee, so you wouldn't be paying more insurance costs. It's an idea. This is not the place to lobby for your employee. Uh, you're not, how is it, so you got, if you got a 20 hour employee, you're already paying this employee, you're not going to be paying more insurance costs. Right. That's all I'm saying. Need a 7D license? Yes. Okay. So this employee is going to have to get a 7D license. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm willing to talk about a lot of different scenarios to save staff. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got to be creative. It's not difficult to get a 7D license. If you can get a regular driver's license, it's like $30. So I imagine with the local school committee that uh, if the override doesn't pass, that uh, we're, all gonna, we're going to be able to translate these numbers into positions at some point? Yes, yeah, so I know that. Okay. Um, I don't have specific positions because that's not appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, but I can tell you that if the override does not pass, we lose 6.5 full-time equivalents. Do you know if they're teachers? Or combination of teachers, combination. I, I, I mean, think we that'll have, be important to put out there. Well, I, we have to be careful because then people start realizing 
who it is because. Um, is, that, is that a bad thing in one way? Well, I can talk about, we're going to have 23 kids in a class. I can talk about, right. um, you know, there's going to be paras, there's going to be teachers, and they, there could be some administration. So. I guess if you said parents and all this, and somebody says that might be me, maybe that person will go out there and try to get more. Yeah, I under, no, I understand. I mean, I, I'm going to be as me. clear as I can without saying the exact person it is. Oh, I agree. Um, but yes, it's um, six point six point five. Yeah, so like six full time, six full time, and a part time. So um, it's going to be devastating, um, to say the least. Um, so. Margaret Lartson, uh, Nine David. I think there's a psychological component to not being specific about which jobs might be lost. Um, because in the past, we've had situation with previous overrides where if they said, well, it's going to be the third grade, one of the third grade teachers, the fourth and fifth grade parents say, well, that's OK. That's not my kid. So I. I I agree with Aaron that we need to, you know, be a little bit circumspect about that. Three, and we don't really know either. But if you said three teachers, for instance, yes. that's general yes. enough? Yes, yeah. Okay. I think they've had to be specific in the past about some of the specials, like the library and art. Um, but I don't know about the teachers. Okay. Good. Just going to do my little school plug <laughs> before. Um, remember that we're talking about... Um, I understand, but look at think of the other budgets when we're talking one person in some budgets and we're talking 6.5 people in my budget. So I really just want to put some thought out there about equity. Um, and I realize we have a big budget. We also do get money from the state that supports our budget in addition to revenue from the town. But I'm just saying that I want it to be understood we already lost some people in the past um, that were never put back. Um, and now we're cutting even more people. And one, one full-time person here, I want us to be just clear that this is going to be very, very devastating. So. Mm -hmm. um, I guess to bring this up for conversation's sake, so we have talked about the Hampshire regional budget, the impact that has had on the town year after year um, after year. Um, this year it obviously compounds with some other issues in town. Has there been any conversation with the other towns in the regional agreement about dissatisfaction with the the sort of the passing on of the cost to towns? Is this something that's come up come up in conversation? Has there been conversations? Are we, you know, in a position to say that you know us and other towns are not happy with these increases and we need to look at doing something a little different? Look at revisiting. With you know, just kind of throwing it out there conversationally. Are we doing anything because? will probably happen again next year, right? Unless we do something proactively to try to curb what's going on. Okay. You say anything on that? We spoke about that last week, Ed, and you were gonna try to get a joint meeting with the select boards. And I know that there are is some dissatisfaction in a couple of the other uh, towns. I know that one town is actually, one of their members of board of selectmen is supposed to reach out to our board of, board of selectmen members, so uh, I'm, I will try to lobby to have that remind to that to happen. Okay, just, just a thought because I, I think we're going down that path. Is it helpful if one of us call, you give us select board members' names? Because obviously you've got a lot on your plate, but I think it's important to get together with these folks and I'm happy, I'm sure the others are happy to, or maybe not sure, but mm -hmm. happy to call the other select board because if we don't sit down and talk about it, we've lost an opportunity. And if we wait too long, we've lost it. And with this, the town administrators can talk about it, but really the driving force will be the boards of members of the board of selectmen. So, yeah, I, I can get you, you, can get us you know, names we and can phone numbers. Yeah. yeah, set up a meeting. Uh, yeah. Give them a meeting when they sit down and talk. Yeah. Or, yeah, Make if you want to send us the select board names, we'll send out an email from us saying we're requesting a meeting. And we'll get some time together. Is that good for the mm -hmm. rest of you? Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, I have no issue with doing that. So if you want to supply us. The board wish to modify this budget or move on to the next line item. 
Very much. Question. Can I just say one more thing about education? Yeah. All right. Uh, Margaret Larson, 9 David. Uh, so after uh, the budget that was created for Hampshire Regional was done prior to the shooting in Parkland. Um, since that time, obviously, emotions are running fairly high. And um, I've heard from another of a number of parents that they would like to bring it up at town meeting that we include a full-time school resource officer uh, at the school. Um, that did not make it into the budget. It was one of the options um, to increase that from 12,500 to about 40. Do I have that correct? Uh, so that may come up um, at town meeting. Now we cannot go back and revisit our budget because it's, it's done. We can lower it, we cannot raise it. Um, so that might, uh, I just wanted to give you a heads that, up about that. That's a that. good question. Can we raise it at town meeting? Once no. it, I don't think so, right? No, but didn't the police chief say that a resource officer is... is Currently there. Ten, right. 10 hours, yeah. 12 hours. 12 hours a week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. well... If right. It would, it, would be a, it, would be an, it would be something that was shared with the other towns, but... Okay. All right. So we're getting really off topic here. So if it comes up on the floor, it will, it will come yeah. up. All right. All right. Uh, move on to public works. Were you going to say something about voting on the thirteen thousand? You, you were talking about that prior to moving on. I just bring it up. Uh, I asked the board if they want to modify anything, and nobody said a word. You talked about the thousand that we have extra, so maybe we should. So you're talking about library wages? Yeah. In the library? No, the transportation. The transportation. Oh, transportation. Just to echo Jim's point, Mike Rosenberg Finance Committee, we should definitely earmark that because we we're here too late tomorrow. When we forget, we may lose sight of it. If it gets past the town meeting, you lose sight of the savings, and it, it may get absorbed somewhere else. So if we can note it that we can save it confirm and then let me make a motion <coughs> to reduce yeah. uh, and that's the uh, local school transportation 13,000 no, vocational transportation right 13,000 so it would be what, right now it's 847 47, both line items mm -hmm. I'll second that discussion All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, 13,000 reduction. Thanks, Mike. Actually, it was Jim. It was Jim? It, it's, it, 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 it's, it, it's going downhill <laughs> fast, man. Six hour old coffee. <laughs> oh, and I'm going are, downhill. Are you proposing a 10 o'clock hard stop? That was my hope, but I'm looking at this, and we have public works and basically health and human services. If there isn't a lot of debate, this might actually close up tonight. Is that a pizza or having breakfast? <laughs> public works. Let's get into the public works, okay? Uh, does finance have any comment on public works? Um, not specifically, no. Um, No, honestly, we, I mean, we looked at the items, you know, there were some of the reductions, um, some of the level services. I know it's, it may create issues with performing some of the tasks done this year versus next year. Um, but I would, to be honest, I'd defer to the highway superintendent to address some of those other, other issues. Does the board have any questions? Yeah, I, I guess only to be cruel to everybody and in equal amounts. The general highway expenses uh, was approved at 152.3 and the override is 155. Should we decrease it to the 152.3 like we did with police and the others? And the same with the highway building expenses by $460? I guess if we're going to go across the board, we do it. Yeah. So I hear a motion to do that? Yeah, I'll, I'll make the motion. You just confirm that some of those are in, I mean, the 400. $60 sounds like some sort of incremental increase. Well, it's, it's if he makes a motion and it's seconded, then we go into discussion. Then right. I can bring Randall up here and we can have a discussion. But uh, we got to get it to my problem with this group is they don't make motions. They have dialogue 
and then they forget what they started. I'll the second the motion. See what I mean? We we'll make a motion that we reduce the general highway expenses from the 155 347 to 152 301, which was fiscal 18 approved, and the highway building expenses from 23 460 to 23,000 even as fiscal 18 <coughs> approved. And second that? I would just like I'll to make. I'll second that. Okay, now we have discussion. Now we have a second. Now we go into discussion. I would like to make one comment on the highway building expenses. <coughs> just and this has just come out. Uh, the state has actually. As we will be subject to the same laws as OSHA, which we never have been as of February of 2019. Uh, I did a recent tour of. I have my own reservations about some of the things in this building, but I have a lot of reservations about from taking a recent tour in the highway garage, uh, and with that coming into effect in uh, February of 2019, I would be hesitant to even cut the $460 from this because... Are you talking about OSHA 10 requirements or...? E no, not but just OSHA 10, OSHA in general. I mean, yeah. we're, we're talking, uh, they're going to come through, they're going to take a look at the electrical outlets, yeah. uh, right. you know, the, they're going to need to be ground faulted, the, the lights, the electricity, uh, trip hazards, the whole nine yards, so... And um, this doesn't affect the fire, the fire station? It will. Well, at least it's their budget. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, this is just a way to be fair across the board in a negative way. I, th I would like to let Randall speak. Oh, absolutely. So, um, $460 one way or the other, I'm already over this year on my building expenses. Um, we may save some in electricity next year uh, because of the upgrades to our lighting. We switched it out with the uh, Eversource rebates. So, hopefully, we can save some money on electricity. Did that happen yet? Yeah. How does it look? It's great. <laughs> We have lights now. I know, it was like a cave when I was in. Yeah, we had two two functioning uh, fluorescent lights in one bay. So anyway, there's that. Um, as far as the general highway, the pavement management plan we paid for suggests we should be putting $550,000 uh, into our infrastructure per year. We're putting in 150. So just so the voters and everyone knows, Infrastructure is going to continue to de degrade. Dan is probably up asking me about Chapter 90. Yes, because that is part of our maintenance of our roads. So just it is. To make sure. It is. Thanks. Don't touch me. But um, <laughs> the $314,000 we get per year for next year is already programmed into the E Street project. The remainder of what we had that has not been spent is encumbered for projects. So we have nothing, or very little. I won't say nothing. I won't qualify. Well, so, but nothing. that's for there. It was used to maintain the roads. So that should be part of that five hundred thousand dollars that they gave. You're using it for it, or are you doing? Can we, above not, have and a, can we not have a conversation here, please? Yeah, I mean, it, you're, you're going into the debate mode. Here. Yeah, let's not do huh? this. Okay. It, sure. Exactly. Sure. It's how we're spinning it, guys. Saying, can you just get behind the podium, please? Otherwise, we're going to be here till twelve o'clock. Behind the podium. Yeah. All right, 314 and 150 still doesn't equal $550,000. Okay. But it's still a better representation than the 150,000 that I you said we had. I don't understand my point. When you come up to the podium, you address the chair, you discuss your <coughs> position. The next party gets up to the chair and just addresses their position. You don't debate between the two of you. Is that the podium? I'm on a board over here. Uh, it doesn't matter. You still have to okay. conduct yourself in a parliamentary procedure. I'm just trying to keep, I hate to say law and order in the old west, but it seems that way at times. Do you have any Thank more you, Randall. questions? No. Thank you. Huh? Dan? Thanks, Randall. No, I, I, my, my point was it was a misrepresentation. I was just making sure the public understood. We do budget more than $150,000 a year towards that 500, and 300 and some odd thousand and change comes out of the state, and that is supposed to go to the potholes and the road maintenance. Your point is taken. Okay. No one can hear you sitting back there. If you want to address the... What's wrong? 
So does the board wish to modify any of this budget? We have a motion and a second to do that. So we have to take a vote. Yeah. I need to hear a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. No. <clears throat> so it doesn't pass. That's right. So I got to ask the question is, let's go back and reinstate some in the police department too. I mean, it's nothing to do with the highway department. It's, are we trying to be fair across the board here to everybody? Or are we gonna go back on what we said originally? I'm personally looking at the fact that the highway department has some real major issues with their building and the $400 to me is not a lot of money I figure. It's just well, it's and the fire it's department doesn't? It's the 3,000. <laughs> I, I mean, you know. Oh, I know the Civil War. So not taken from the fire department. I just think the building maintenance is required. That's where I think I'm coming from. Shall we move on? Okay, we move on. Health and Human Services. Health Department, Animal Inspector, Council on Aging, Veteran Services. Everyone here to speak to that? Finance Committee, concerns? Um, one of the budgets that had conversation, I think probably more finance team related than finance committee rate related, was the Council on Aging and the, um, the budgeting scenario they're in but I would defer to them to, to talk about it and explain why they've requested more and the, you know, the explanation of the grant funding versus the town funding and those types of things. So I would just defer to them for that. Um, in terms of the other items, you know, we know there's the increase in the veterans benefits, um, you know, Board of Health or Health Department um, lines, you know, those are steady as well, so. Janet Kane, 83 Glendale Road, Council on Aging Chair of the Board, um, try to address Mike's question. So as Ed stated at the beginning that the, um, the director's position, which is I think the only probably department head in town, um, 15 hours are funded by the town, nine and a half hours are funded by various grants of which take away from the really the key core purpose of the grants. We're running over budget on the fritted grant right now and we pay two hours for administration cost out of that of two hours a week for the director. And the state formula grant, the intention is to help build and grow our programs. And I guess I would come back to request one last time to try to fully fund the director or a department head who makes $20 an hour for the 26 hours by the town in the override. That will also encourage the 1,700 voters that we have as seniors in town to come out to vote in favor of the override. I've, I've mentioned my support for that as well. I don't, I don't think that a department head should be staffed under grant. Nobody else really in town is. It's different under administrative assistant and other positions, but I feel that we should uh, own this director position and I think the money that's being used to fund her salary is supposed to go to senior citizens. And I agree, I think it's there'll be something in it for them. So can you just go over that number? So you're talking about the Council on Aging Wages. Is that 23.6? What do you want it to be? I think the request was at 32 and change under there. Yes, okay, to make her fully funded. And to, to Janet Kane, if I have to enter, 83 Glendale Road. As Charlie stated about the building um, commissioner, we just want to pay him for the hours that he works. That goes as well for the director of the Council on Aging. Does she have a certain work schedule, X amount of hours a week? We're or? open 26 hours a week. So she is a 26 hours? So she hour. is there 26 hours. Well, we try to get her, stretch her to 26 hours a week. So you're looking for $9,000? Mm -hmm. 
she's 15 to 26 hours, so we're looking at 11 hours a week at $20 an hour, 52.2 weeks. I think it's a little higher than nine. So if this increase went in, she would be there 26 Yeah, I mean, I think we requested in that budget, yes, we requested whatever that budget is is what I submitted at the time. So you have 32 it, it will get, six yeah, it'll, versus 26. Yeah, we'll get her closer to that, yes. Right. Okay. So, well, 9,000 should bring you right to what you requested. What I requested, 9, yeah. 9,000 is what she's looking for yeah. in the override section. In the override section. If the override goes through, that's the area of the budget you want to increase by 9,000. Yes. And if the override doesn't go through, we leave it the way it is. So that's what you were saying. So how much is the grant for that we're putting into this position? Is we it get um, um, $11.70 per senior based on a 2010 census. Okay. Um, it was $12 a year ago. It's gone down. Do, so do the we have grant a total here? Down. So that Roughly. equals about eleven thousand seven hundred and seventeen dollars. So if we minus. fund the nine thousand in there, senior center will have an extra eleven thousand something to Which use is, elsewhere. Yeah. So we can do outreach to, to seniors that are in homes. We can expand the programs. We can, you know, mm -hmm. pay Which for. Which I think is needed. So. If it helps get them on board, I think. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, I mean, I've been watching the town not reach out. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing okay. Good. So Vicki Morrow, Pomeroy Meadow Road, Town Accountant. Um, I understand where the COA is coming from in terms of working more hours and they want to be paid for those hours and they, you know, you're trying to compare it to what the building inspector did, but he worked at that for two years. Two years he tried to get those extra hours. Now we're talking six or eight months, not saying that it's not needed, but you know, you have, I, I guess you can't compare them apples to apples because he tried to get that for two years to get those extra hours. And he was working those extra hours for two years before he actually got that money. Not to say that this isn't worth it, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, I guess I'm just, it's just hard to compare them. You know what I mean? But I'm looking at that nine to $11,000 to be used for the town for more outreach to the elderly. I'm up. not disagreeing with you. I'm, j I'm just trying to point out that, you know, I understand that you want people to work and get paid for the hours that they work, but like I said, it took him two years to get to that well, point. The, the person is getting paid for the hours just coming from the grant and they want well, to use the grant elsewhere. Correct. So, so, so you have a PCF and the PCF is, is 22 and a half hours, but the person's working 26 hours because some of it's coming from the grants. How can you take all that from the grants and put it into the town when that's not really what they were hired for to begin with, I guess? They were hired for a particular job description. And, and the job description and the hours were specific on the PCF. Right, but the funding sources, we, all we're doing is paying her salary out of the town out budget. Of, as the town budget and the, and the and so it was set, set up for the town budget and the um, state formula grant. Mm -hmm. And so you want to take the state formula grant and use it for senior citizens and give more and use more hours because she's not getting paid from the state formula grant and the and the budget for the town for 26 hours. It was set for 22 and a half. So you're going to increase the hours also, I guess, is what I'm just trying to get at. And not saying that's not worth it. I'm just pointing out the pieces. Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted to say I don't think that comparing like the uh, building inspector. I, I, just, yeah, I think it's just apples and oranges. Yeah. You know, a year ago we had the room full every single select board meeting with very unhappy seniors and I think we're on the right path in terms of having the seniors. We're only increasing the number of seniors in town. Um, so I, I think that they deserve it. Dan Pellegrini, 76 Brick Road. The, the confusing part that I have on what you just said, Vicki, about the building inspector is he had a set number of hours. He chose to work past those. So he's not actually saving lives, so he could have worked the hours, but he decided to work but more. This is the same thing. If they're working more and they have a set hours, I, I, I understand. I understand. But, the, but to me, it comes back down to management. If someone's hired to work 30 hours and they're working 35 hours, they need to scale back to 30 hours. I guess that works for everybody. Yeah. George Bluff, 25 Gun Road. I think for the sake of everybody's sanity and being late and 
following the uh, idea of equality. I think the director works a certain amount of hours as stated in her agreement with the town and taking the position. Um, I agree that shouldn't be funded through a grant. We should be covering that because that grant should be going to outreach, things of that nature. And what you're saying, yes, if she's pushing past those hours, what was agreed upon, that's one thing. But we should be fully funding the hours that she agreed upon in her contract. Thank you. Francine Tushman, 83 Glendale Road. I guess I take exception when we start comparing one individual to another. Um, it really is for the benefit of the, of the seniors. The increased time will go to them. It doesn't go to anything else. And I think I need to also disclose I'm also the, the treasurer of the Friends of the Council on Aging. And I see going into that room how many more people are participating in the programs and how much more benefit they would gain if that program was available to them more hours by virtue of the fact. Because when she's not there, the, the place is locked down. So you need to think of the quality of the life of people in this town. And I'm not saying you, per se. I think we. And, and if you compare our town to other towns and, this, and the offerings that we provide to seniors, I think we need to be embarrassed, okay? And just to tell you a little bit about what the, what the friends do, I don't think you know this, but the friends raise money and we bought for $4,500 a software program for the senior center that will track not only the participants but the services that they receive in the hope that we can qualify with that data for more grant money. That's all uh, I have to quick say. question. Uh, 26 hours, is that the only hours that the senior center is open? That's so it. she's got to be there, or well, is that a policy? Or? Correct. Yeah, the, well, I mean, we have to have somebody cover it. The doors are open for 26 hours but a, a week. a volunteer couldn't cover? I mean, not that, uh, that's a different topic, but I mean, just a general question. Typically, you know, there's quarry issues and a lot of other things. No, I and just consistency. If she um, could work 26 hours and somebody else could be there for more, could we have it open 40 hours a week? I mean, that's a possibility, it but I, seems like I try to walk before we can run, but <laughs> what was it? I'd like to walk before we can run, but yeah, yeah I mean, our, her PCF said 22 and a half in order to um, help maintain the other people that are also supporting the volunteer programs and everything. Um, she does get paid two hours out of the Frida grant, which got her to 24 and a half, and it is open 26. So I think um, as like any person that runs a department, we don't expect them to work a, a partial day. We're, we're trying to um, make her, make it, I mean, in the override, just give her the, free up the monies that we're paying her out of other grants to go to the seniors. I mean, we have a lot of homebound folks in town. We don't have anybody outreach to them. I mean, there's a lot of, a, a lot that we're not doing right now. So. If I remember correctly, didn't we also have a director and a, an assistant mm -hmm years ago and we now had it's just like one position a 13 and a 13 right. hour two people um they didn't have the experience or the qualifications so that, that the position as a full-time director requires by definition of the job description yeah. so. i also think that when the job description first came out the no, the hours were up higher than 22 and a half but uh there was a complete decimation of the entire department that, if you remember, a previous select board member was the interim director, there was a, an assistant, there was a volunteer coordinator. Well, basically, everybody ended up leaving, and I think it was very important to the seniors that we retain the volunteer coordinator, what, six or four or six hours a week? So they reduced the number of hours of the director in order to pay this person so there'd be somebody that was, was consistent, was consistent from the, the last department. So regime to the original this intention was to have the um, director have additional hours. Right. And Just it was sacrificed in favor of having somebody.